It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. The monster mash. And it's a graveyard smash. It's now the mash. It caught on in a flash. The monster mash. It's now the monster mash. They did now the mash. Everything's cool. It's a part of the plan. The monster the mash. Monster Come here. Your will is strong. Indeed. <laughs> Actually in? Are we in? Are we inserted? Have we inserted into the planetary rotation? Welcome, uh, October thirtieth, twenty seventeen, on Halloween's Eve. Eve. I am Doc Normal. Oh. I'm right here. How? Oh. Oh. And with me is the one and only David S. Pumpkins. Oh, look at yeah, this. Yeah, hi. How you doing? Look at this camera. All right, what's going on? That's all right. Hi, folks. Well. You're saying, what the heck is on your head right now? It's R2-D2. Uh, yeah, I'm R2-D2. Now, I was going to go as a banana. I had the banana outfit all ready to go. Unfortunately, a uh, kid has a banana outfit, so I had to improvise at the last second. Right? So what am I going to do? Should I go as a middle-aged, fat, bald guy? I decided, no, I'm going to go as an old-time leather head football player. So I broke out out of, out of, uh, out of the vaults my... Uh, my old leatherhead football helmet, and yeah, here I am. Hello, everybody. Happy Halloween. This is Coffee with Curmudgeons. We are back here on a Monday, and we have got a very special show lined up for you today, yes. folks. Today is the one and the oh, only geez. pop culture professor, Dr. Rebecca Housel. That's right. So we're going to have two docs in the house today. Uh, yeah, she should be coming on in uh, uh about 10 minutes, yes. and I'm here, and as you see, I have no costume, and all the camera scrambling over the weekend. <laughs> like, seriously, it's just like, it's so much. I, I try to take advantage of the good weather, which has to do with something with the production thing, and uh, so, because, uh, look, and we didn't do a show on further. Mm. And so, you know, it's just like coming in here to the new world <laughs> order. I don't know. Brave and new world. Obviously, I'm not wearing a costume. So, I got my costume, actually, Jason. Yeah, yeah. Well, aren't you going as Johnny Cash? You're like the man in black. That is. Yeah. Okay, what do you got? Costume. Right there. Oh. Maybe we can... Actually, we probably can just do this here. Is that your Green Lantern? Do you see it? 
It's a it's a skull ring. Ooh, skull and bones? Just a, I don't know, just a mm. skull ring, you yeah. know? Which reminds me of that... Uh, yeah. Just the damn camera again. Reminds me of that uh, uh, Are We the Baddies uh, oh, yeah. routine British comedy. So uh, before we get started with uh, Dr. Housel, um, which we're excited about, because mm-hmm. um, she's going to talk about all things pop culture... Uh, why don't you give us a rundown on the breaking news, oh, boy. Mr. D- Jason. That's right. I... <laughs> and now for the skins. Yes. And uh, news. For the running back. <laughs> That's right. Oh, look at him go. Look, it's 10 yards. It's 15 yards. It's 20 yards. That's right. I'm doing the Heisman thing. New- news from a face you can trust. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Exactly. Hey, Talk about things come out of the gate, bam, on a Monday morning, right? You bam. wake up, your alarm goes off, you're still groggy, you're, you're grabbing for your coffee or your favorite hot beverage of the morning. I don't know, maybe you're doing oatmeal or something. You turn on the radio, because you got to know what's going on out there, and you find out all hell is break loose in the morning. Uh, the uh, big news, of course, you know, the suspense over the weekend was, of course, Special Prosecutor Bob Mueller. Uh, had uh, reached some indictments, and uh, he sealed it under special seal to be broken early Monday morning, and yet did it break. Uh, he arrested this morning uh, was uh, Paul Manafort, former uh, Trump campaign manager. Yes. Hmm. And, and, uh, so, yeah. and and uh, his uh, assistant. Uh, is that the... G- guy by the last name of Gates. Oh, yeah, Gates. Yeah. And uh, both of them have been charged. Uh, Manafort himself has been charged with 12 counts, uh, all including such such, favor- such favorites as uh, cover-up uh, and a conspiracy to the United States of America. Well, and uh, money laundering and all that funny, all that fun you know, stuff. Who, who, you know, so. <laughs> if you... <laughs> Who's not just doing a favorite conspiracy? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Of course, you know we had the JFK stuff come out what Thursday. Yeah, the the nothing burger. Right. That was a, that was you a know. JFK nothing burger with extra well, nothing the, sauce. Well, the so the uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to adjust the camera. I can do this while we talk to Doc Housel actually, yes. because the cameras are all adjusted for the other thing, and and then we didn't. Whoops. And, uh, da, 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 and Doc's was busy with other stuff. Whoops. This morning. Also my. Uh, I'm just, yes. I get a little, by the way, Halloween. Pumpkins. Yes, Halloween. Boo. Right. Nice start. Trick or treat. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> I, I was doing some pre-production things for yes. some other things. So just calm down out there. I, I should calm down. I should just have some coffee. So uh, what I heard is that on, was it late Friday or Saturday? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it was, or maybe it was even as early as Thursday after everyone complained about the JFK files. Right. Trump tweeted, no, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to release them all. Yeah. But, but is that the 180 days in April? April, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. It's a suspense. It's pretty much what happened, happened. I mean, what happened was what I would have predicted. Yeah. I think I told you, I said, yeah, I- if anything, it's going to be so redacted. It'll be like, you yeah. know. Yeah. And then Ted Cruz's dad, redacted. Right. Just had to throw that one in there. Was he the 15th man on a grassy knoll? Yeah. Will the world ever know? <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out in Ted, April, right? Ted Cruz's dad bought, uh, bought uh, uh, an ice cream for his son. Yes. Who he's nicknamed Zodiac. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I, it's I a family like a, name, I guess. I, I, I yeah. like a good... This was back in the primaries in the campaign where yeah. they started saying Ted looked like the, the Zodiac, Zodiac Killer. The yeah. police drawing of the Zodiac Killer. And then there was something about... Wait, I, was it the Trump campaign that suggested his father was on the grassy knoll? That was, was uh, it? That was, was it? Donald himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Yeah, you, you better ask Ted about that, you know, because, you know, his dad may have been on the ground. I'm like, oh, oh man. Not another conspiracy and then, And then, okay, so quick rundown yeah. of the news. And then we had, like, uh, uh, some GOP guys mm-hmm. who got in a hissy fit about Trump. Yeah. This flake guy. And was it Corker? Or one Senator of... Bob Corker from okay. Tennessee. Uh, and Flake's yeah. the guy who's not going to run again. Both of them aren't, yeah. Uh, but the GOP is still 
going down that pathway and oh, uh, yep. Democrats. And then the big thing, too, is that uh, all last week uh, – there was the Uranium One deal and right. the dossier that it turns out the DNC money was going to fund that that uh, dossier, yeah, uh, the Steel dossier. So the Steel dossier. So I okay, <sighs> folks. At the end of the day, you want my assessment? You know, in those like uh, good old Quentin Tarantino movies. Yes. What happens at the end? Like, uh, uh, what, what's the the Reservoir Dogs? Oh yeah, Reservoir yeah, Dogs. Yeah. Like. Be, oh, see, maybe spoilers, but what happens in the end, right? <laughs> Everyone pulls their gun. Yeah. And it's called, what it's, what's it called? The Mexican Standoff. Yeah. Because Quentin loves the Mexican Standoff. Right. It's where you have a gun, I have a gun. We're pointing at each other. No one's going to win. Right. We're both going to pull the trigger. Right. Folks, that's right. what's going on. That's really what's going on. That's right. Trust me. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, you were so orange. Just <laughs> in that monitor. Well, you know, I'm. I'm ooh. Of course, so am I. Am I am I as orange as Trump though? Am I? Oh man. Well, Sorry. we can we can we can fix that. Uh, I, it's I might, Halloween. I might be orange just for no reason, I'll and be, I'm not wearing a costume. Well, you got this right here. Well, I got an idea. Let's let, let's incorporate <laughs> it, right? Let's let let's let's spin it. You know what? Before Doc yeah. Housel comes on, okay. I'll be a uh, Jason O'Lantern. Yeah, no, I've got a little thing for you. Okay, okay. In the spirit. In the spirit of uh, crappy elderly Halloween homes. Crappy elderly Halloween homes. Gotcha. You know what that is, right? Oh sure. Okay, that's where you're a kid. Sure. You dress up. You've worked on this costume all week, right? Yeah. You're ready for the big the big night out. You're, you're ready for the show. Do ready? kids even do this today? Maybe I don't they know. don't. Maybe this is just our oh, trick or treating, like Charlie Brown like trick or treat, where you'd go out and 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 you've worked, you've worked on this night because, come on, oh yeah, you're a kid. You start like three months prior, right? You're a kid. Yeah. School starts and then automatically you start thinking, hey, Halloween's coming. What I got a job. Is this you're getting? Yeah. You're earning. You're out there earning. It's like, kid, you get out there and earn. That's right. It's entrepreneurship. I want to see ten Snickers in that bag. Skittles and not the little size. I'm no. talking full size right. Snickers, right? Yeah. Throw in a few three. You don't come home unless you bring a Chico stick. Yeah. You know. So you're earning, right? So you're, you're working for the big big night, right? <laughs> How much are we gonna earn, right? Yeah. And you go to the houses, and the lights are on, and the families, and the little, it's so much fun. American Halloween, right? Oh, yeah. And then maybe uh, you walk past someone in a little like uh, Yoda outfit, uh, uh, and and then your 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 friend's uh, costume kind of comes off, and you realize mm. he's an extraterrestrial from somewhere. Mm, mm. Who knew? Um, <clears throat> always wanted the Reese's pieces. That's right. Anyway, uh, so we'll talk about favorite Halloween scenes in movies with Doc Housel, I'm sure. Sure. Uh, so uh, then you come to that one house. Yes. Uh, maybe someone like myself, a curmudgeon. You never know. On the elderly years. Yeah. <laughs> it's the first time I've referred to myself as elderly. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and, and this is the one yeah. you're like, should we or should we not? Yeah. Do I, hear, I stay or do I go? That's right. I da, hear da, da, old da, da, man da. Barnes is kind of crotchety tonight. I don't know if I want to go over there. Well, if it's yeah. the old lady, she comes out and she's, oh, look at you, lovelies. Let me see what I've got back here for you. Pinching your cheek and everything. You know? Clearly, grandma didn't get the memo that tonight mm. was the big night of Halloween and we're out earning. That's right? right. That's right. <clears throat> So in the spirit of really bad elderly homes of weird Halloween <laughs> gifts. Yes, yes. That you may earn. Excellent. I have brought mine what I will be giving out this Halloween. Sweet! Because every year, every year, I panic. Yeah. I go to the supermarket. Sure. I quickly buy those, you know, two for five dollars. I, I don't go overboard. I just buy some max bags of of stuff just sure. in case you never know yeah. yeah then what happens no one comes over and i'm stuck with a whole bunch of candy and i don't eat candy i don't i don't yeah. it's not my it's not my thing so then i'm like hey <laughs> you want some candy hey and my kid would then earn and get a whole bunch of candy and then we'd have extra double triple candy sure right sure and then uh 
I don't know. I got hats to wear. So, Jason, yes. why don't you reach in there? Sweet. The bang of tr- Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. 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 Ding dong. Oh, yeah. Don't you look lovely? You Trick know, or treat. My first boyfriend looked like you in 1923. He was a running back. He died of head injuries. I want Snickers. Well, just reach in there. Okay. Just reach in there and see what you get. Grandma's got something real nice for you. Oh, you got the big present. Wowee, watch this. <laughs> the War of the Worlds. <laughs> that's right. That's a paperback from 1970. That's H.G. Wells, The War of the Worlds. Wow! You know, you know, uh, uh, Orson Welles did did a did a famous radio play and scared the crap out of the nation with that. At first, they thought it was a falling star. That I, I got that from the neighbor boy who was selling his scholastic books from 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 yeah. But so I can't eat this. Reading is important. I don't want to read. I just want to eat. You went for the big one. I couldn't help. But I stuck my paw in there and. We can do this one was, more. Okay. I think we got time for one more. World so, worlds? yeah, World of Worlds. Talk about that. That's going to be, like, a, a big thing. Oh, yeah. Eventually, you and I talked about it. We're, uh, we might actually stream Ooh. the War of the Worlds on Newsbox tomorrow night. That would maybe. be nice, yeah. It's a thought. I, like, I, a brilliant thought I had late last night. Yeah. Old 1939 Mercury Theater Orson Welles mm-hmm. scared the... Hummus out of everybody. I mean, they no, people were they calling. They didn't know it was real. Yeah. I mean, some, some or didn't know it was fake. I mean, some people, some people, they, they turns out, yes, we knew it was, was <laughs> fake. They had announced that they were doing it at the beginning. Yeah. What it was is people were tuning in, like, like you do, maybe news box, yeah, A couple minutes late, you know. Yeah. You, <laughs> and. Right on cue. Right on cue. Yes. I have to answer it, though. Well, and here we go. What? What do we got here? Please access to your microphone. Yes, go. Hello? Hello? Oh, good. Oh, good. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. There we go. Yeah. And she's right on time, (sighs) as as always, because you know what? She is... The pop culture professor. Doc Housel, can you hear us? I can hear you, boys. Hello. How are you today? Thanks for having me on. Thank you. And this is awesome because I, last time we had you on on the phone or mm-hmm. a couple phone calls ago, I, I, I changed the whole system up and I <laughs> moved it to the better yeah. where we would get better quality sound on the phone. So that's why I'm like, hi, are you there? You're there. <laughs> 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 She's there. I still, I still can't swear, though, right? Like, I'm still not allowed to swear, or am I? I yeah, forget. Uh, Is this the show where I could swear? You know, FCC <laughs> style, maybe, you know? You could throw in a few dams and hells, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just just to sound... I'm more, a, I'm more of a fuck girl, but oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That... Easy. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. But... Doc, how are... Good morning, Portland. That's right. <laughs> Happy Monday. Hello there, pro- Professor. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? I miss you so much. I'm happy to be on today with you. Oh, yeah. I mean, when we were sitting there, like, we got to discuss all things Halloween. We got to, I mean, pop culture. We we, we need we need Doc Housel. We got to. Oh, I'm your girl. Yeah. So, yeah, we got some cool things to talk about, too. I mean, we got, of course, uh, season number two of Stranger Things came out on Friday. Right. That was a big thing, of course. We yeah, I watched that. Star Trek Discovery. All done with that. <laughs> right, and uh, then we got, of course, you know, uh, we're still under the spell of Pennywise, right? From you know it. Oh, Stephen King. I love that. Yeah. Uh, so we got a lot of cool stuff. Uh, movies, yeah. yeah. Movies. And uh, so, like, Doc, like for about a week before Halloween, I always get myself in the mood for Halloween, so I primer myself with uh, old trusted and true shows, like. For instance, last night was the old 1931 Bella Lugosi, you know, Dracula. Got to do that. And right? I happened to put that at the oh, head of the show. Right. And you got to. You got to. Yeah, that's classic. And then the night before that, I was in a really weird mood. So I, I'm gonna, I went a little, uh, I went a little Ed Wood. 
because you know Johnny Depp, <laughs> Tim Burton, Ed Wood. Nice. Yeah, it's very gotta, nice. You got to do that too. And tonight, tonight, since it's like Halloween Eve, sort of, I'm breaking out the old Boris Karloff, the Mummy, the oh, original. Yeah. So, what about Frankenstein, though? Yeah, do that. Well, I want to do something Ed- different because okay. you know Frankenstein. Because I already got the big, you know, Dracula, Bella. So mm-hmm. I figured, well, I want Karloff, but I want to go something just a yeah. little different. So I decided to do a. And of course, you got the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Yeah, you know, that get, was last night. It was last night. Got to, you you, you got to catch it. In yeah. fact, in fact, uh, w- word is that if you don't catch Charlie Brown at least once a year, preferably on Halloween, uh, you're, you're just not American. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, yeah, but I, I wanted to get your take first of all. Let, let's talk about probably one of the scary. You know, Stephen King continues to uh, scare me out of my knickers, right? And I, I I saw like the uh, trailers for it, and it just looks phenomenal. And I and I said, you know, I I bet Doc Housel has seen it, and I bet you she's got a take on it, Doc. Oh, what, what? I did. I saw it about a month before it hit theaters. I got a little sneak peek of it. Stephen King um, is somebody that I've actually people have called me to get quotes about him, so. I wrote like an encyclopedia entry about him. He's just like one of these sort of one of my uh, influences as a writer. Um, But I think, you know, also just in general as a person, his his whole take on horror isn't because he wants to scare your pants up. It's because he's scared out of his pants. (laughs) The man has more phobias than, you know, clowns among being one of them. Um, And he just sort of Wrote, wrote like initially in the 70s started writing about his own fears you know the things that scared him like to death mm-hmm. and it just was a way for him to cope and it ended up he's but he's also like an unbelievable writer i mean yeah. he's just incredible as a writer so it was classic it's the classic stephen king um but kind of updated i feel like it's a little bit more 21st century in some ways because of casting and stuff like that but um I mean, I, and I have to put a little preface to this. So, so, you know, apologies to everybody listening right now who's seen the film and has been scared out of their minds. I saw it and I was laughing my ass off. Mm. I, just, I just think that clown is so funny. <laughs> I was like, but then again, I was one of those little kids who sat on Santa Claus's lap when she was like two and started screaming with laughter, not like with fear. Both kids are crying, you know, they're like, please don't put me on the stranger's lap. I'm like, oh, look at this funny man. <laughs> you know, he's cracking me up. So my sense of humor is maybe a little off. <laughs> yeah. I'll admit it. But I just thought it was so funny. You know, you'll float too. You'll float too. And I'm just laughing, laughing. There was maybe five other people in the theater with me at this at this preview, the sneak peek, and they were looking at me like I was disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I but I. <laughs> You're like, well, maybe. <laughs> well, you know, that's that. See, to me though, I guess see, I got a totally different take on it because. Uh, that that sort of uh, it, it's just uh, it's bread and butter to me. So when you're when you laugh and stuff, that is just one of your many 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 redeeming qualities. So <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. Well, with the clown craze in the states, all these criminal clown clowns are either running around, yeah. and also like across the pond in UK, there's been all these clown sightings oh, and yeah. YouTube videos of southern ladies big. Southern ladies saying, "Oh, if I see me a clown, I'm gonna kill it." You know, <laughs> <laughs> my God, I'm like, "Oh my!" That was like a classic that was passed around. I think this time last year. So yeah. it it hits an it hits a particular nerve, like American nerve in so, our culture right now because of this right. clown craze. So what, what is it about clowns that scare a lot of people? Do- I I. I can't say because I find them hysterical. Even evil clowns are funny to me because it's it's so not true. You know, so if I see a clown in the street, I'm going to be like, hi, honey bozo, and I'll be like hugging him and being, you know, even if he's got a knife, I'm sure he won't stab me because I'll be giving out hugs. Right, <laughs> yeah. Because, because when, when I was growing up, we had like the really cool benign clowns, right? right. We had a uh, red, right. you know, red skeleton. We had a uh, yeah. we, we had bozo. Which was, Bozo, you know, he's, he's awesome. always happy. Emmett, uh, Emmett, uh, Ronald McDonald. Ronald McDonald. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think Ronald was a little. And even though, uh, Krusty the Clown, right? The Simpsons. Krusty! Absolutely. He was psychotic, though, and sociopathic, wasn't he? Well, I mean... well you, okay. And you know who Krusty was, <laughs> was patterned after? 
Who that? You should know this, Jason. <laughs> I know, I know. Coming from Portland, R- Oregon. Rusty Nails. Rusty Nails. There you go. You got to ring the bell. Okay, Rusty Nails. There you go. So Rusty, Rusty Nails, <laughs> right. who was a, was a uh, gosh, he lived to local. be 90 yeah. something something, was a local uh, kids show host, you know, with the before, balloons and all this. And he was, Before Ramblin' Rod. Yeah, before Ramblin' Rod. Yeah. And he worked at Alpenrose Dairy. And Matt Graining, since he, you know, comes from here, from Portland, patterned. Krusty the Clown after Rusty Nails. That's right. Well, a lot different. Boom. A lot different, but um, it was still a lot. Rusty, sorry, just aside, when my daughter was, was little, mm-hmm. we went out to Alpenrose Dairy Yeah. in the 2000s. He was still there still doing, doing shows it, huh? in his 90s, like 80, late 80s, 90s. I, I was wow. thrilled. I was like, it's Rusty Nails. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Who clown is life. Forever? Clown life is what equals longevity, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah. But who? But who clown maybe, maybe he is a bit of a of a ghoul or a ghost, huh? Rusty Nails. You know, right. Years later. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's like, the thing about this scary clown. Okay. Okay. Is this? Uh, you know, when we were growing up, mm-hmm. the old curmudgeons. Mm. Like you know, <laughs> when we were in little the 40s and the 50s, and the, yeah. when our dads, you know, but uh, you know, it, like you said, clowns were funny. Clowns were fun. You'd go to the there was a circus that you'd go to, the Ringling Brothers, the yeah. clown, the clown yeah. car. Yes. Uh, how do you get all those people in the car? How do they get out? I don't know. But do you yeah. think it's the 70s that? It, where it made the turn because there was that one serial killer who oh wore the, Gacy yeah so you think that sort that of turned it? it was that what kind of oh, that could made, be yeah John, you know. John Wayne Gacy yeah you're I think you're onto something <laughs> you there. Know, was that was that where we got Pennywise and Stephen King and all I the, think you might be pretty close to true there um, I, I feel like the and, and it's and, and and you know he wasn't alone there was a I, I was wasn't watching it but I saw it on a commercial one of these real life cases where a woman dressed as a clown, went into some person's house, shot the wife, mm. and then oh, and nobody even right. knew she was a woman. That's yeah. right. That's yeah, just... that was like recently on a on a show, a crime show. It was and, a cold and case. she ended up marrying the guy. Yeah, yeah it was a cold Jeez. case. Exactly. She married the guy. She not, shot she his wife laugh. and then later married him, and um, not as a clown, obviously. And people thought that she was a man. Yeah. That the clown was a man, just assumed, uh-huh. because all men had been clowns. See how patriarchal patriarchy works against yeah. men sometimes? That's right. <laughs> right yeah, <laughs> yeah that, wow. that's, that's, uh, you are right. That's, that's right. That, that yeah. was the, uh, I remember reading about that. It was just in the news the uh, last couple of months. I, I, I apologize yeah. laughing. I was laughing out of irony because it's, you know. You're right. Hate is crime. That's weird. Make yeah. some of us, you know, react by... In oh no! Ways. It's it is totally. It's one of those cosmic irony things that uh, just baffles the mind. It's just basically like it's a, it's the same thing. Wearing clown clown makeup, clown suits to to you know sort of scare people is the same function as superheroes wearing masks to save people or villains wearing masks to hurt people. Yeah. It's the same thing. They're just like they're just taking what is an extremely old concept. Um, and uh, and kind of turning it into something, you know, just making it a little scarier, taking every basically ruining all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, okay, that that brings up a point, kind of an offshoot question uh, for you, is why why do we like to get scared so much? What is it about us and in our psyche that we love we love the scary movies, we love the haunted houses, we love everything Halloween, and most of all, we love to be scared. What what is it about ourselves? that we, you know, that we like this so much? Well, I think the key point is when you're talking about the things you are, like scary movies and haunted houses and haunted hayrides, um, these are all safe risks. Mm. None of this is, you wouldn't, if you lived a real nightmare like I did in Atlanta, you wouldn't like it. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't be laughing. It wouldn't be fun at all because it isn't. But these are all safe risks. It's just for fun. Um, you get off the hayride. You, you get out of the haunted house. You know, you, you walk out of the theater two hours later, and, and you go back to happy blue skies, you know. Right, yeah. Different colored leaves in the fall. And, you know, like pumpkins on people's doorsteps. And Halloween is, is really very fun. People don't dress up because they it's a religious mandate or it's like a national holiday. People dress up because they get pure joy out of doing so. Um, so it's like one. It's a very unique holiday that way, and it's not so much about being scared. I think as as just like kind of having fun. So so 
you know, being scared in a safe way is fun. Being scared in real life, not so fun. <laughs> right. And being scared in a Fred Meyer, even worse. <laughs> even worse. <laughs> Sorry. that For you, I should have said being scared in a Piggly Wiggly. I don't know. Or something. I, what's what's joke, terrible, terrible joke. Terrible joke. Something back east, right? <laughs> what, what's like the big chain back east? It's a Piggly Wiggly or something. Is it Piggly Wiggly? Right? I thought that was in the south. I don't know. That's in the South. Piggly Wiggly is in the South. Publix is in the South. Kroger's. Those were all Kroger. like my... Yeah. Piggly Wiggly was not something I went to. That's like Tennessee. More Georgia has Publix and Kroger's and, you know, Win Publix Dixie. is better prices. Kroger's is very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. It was a crap joke. There's like Stop It Shop, you know, in the in the Northeast. There's Stop It Shop. <laughs> Wegmans is sort of a newcomer. It's all over the Boston area. It's all over, like, Virginia, D.C. I don't know. Look at us. They're, we're, they're awesome. We're, we're, giving out tons of, <laughs> we're giving out tons of grocery yes. shout-outs. Win, win Dixie, this is for you, you know. <laughs> On our Halloween show. Right. Yeah, but actually, boys, right, where do people shop for Halloween candy? Exactly. All these places. There, there you, you go. go. This yeah. is where you go to get the candy. It's the beginning of, like, the costumes and... I think I've been shopping for Halloween since August, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I have more Halloween candy than, and you know, so all these grocery stores, man, they make out at this time of year. And then we put yeah. up, I just saw Christmas decorations up in my grocery store. Oh, oh. Yep. I was like, hey, all right. There's a Christmas tree. Giving hasn't even, not even a mention. <laughs> There's a Christmas tree that's decorated on uh, Caesar Chavez right, yes. Boulevard. Yeah, not too uh, far away from the Hotel Theater. In yeah. uh, end of August? Yeah. Are yeah. you kidding me? Like what? in someone's yard, you're just like stop. But anyway, so what? Uh, what's, what's what's your costume? What are you going? Yeah, at? what's what's Doc Housel going for this year? Well, I always go as myself, which is basically somebody you just can't see this normally. So I just have to put it on so people can see it. But I have little devil horns and I have black feathered wings. I oh. mean, I can't help myself. I'm just like a little bit on the evil side, but not really. Not really, you know, just like kind of a hot, sexy evil. <laughs> the hot, sexy evil. I don't want to go yeah, for that old dime story evil. I need the hot and sexy <laughs> evil. You know. Right. That's yeah. right. H-A-W-T, hot. I mean, that's how hot it is. No, I mean, this year I am thinking about kind of wearing like, like a black leotard thing for answering the door for all the kids <laughs> with my little black wings and my uh, devil horns and my full makeup, you know, stage makeup and all the... All the fathers come to the door and they're like, "Hey, can I have a candy bar too?" I'm like, yeah. Are you asking for a candy bar, or are you asking for something else? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, kid, want some candy? But uh, uh, no, we we, <laughs> we we tried doing that with Buddha one time. We put him in the black leotard and devil horns, and I think he got like seven restraining orders. So I just, you know, we... no, I love Buddha. He's so great. He's hot. He's hot and sexy too. I say this often when I'm talking to you guys, but it's so true. Girls, why would you want a six pack when you can have a keg? Oh, Hello, oh, he's Come not. On. Oh, we'll he, have to remember that. <laughs> Buddha is so fabulous. He's not just the keg. He's the whole damn jungle juice party. Oh, she's reading. Oh. She's redefined uh, the word dad bod to mean pony keg. Pony keg. That's right. <laughs> this isn't a dad, dad bod. This oh, is a pony keg. Uh, uh, you know what? You know, let's just let's just stop right there. Um, I, I got a question, man. Yeah. When did uh, I'm going to throw this out to the, the to the general the the, the the round table here? When did uh, when did Halloween really become an American institution in this country? Good question. I mean, oh well, um, you know. I'm going to put you on speaker now because uh, I'm actually looking in my notes. If you can believe I have notes, I do. Oh, my gosh. I know. You know, it started, uh, you know, Halloween is a very old hol holiday. Sam Hain, and, yeah. And, yeah, exactly. Sam Hain is November 1st. That's actually the day I was conceived. Well, maybe TMI. Well, but, tr uh, trick or treat, Doc. <laughs> trick or treat. And then I was born on some other Celtic holiday that, that uh, is about the sun god. I'm like, oh my god, I don't know. Who am I? You know? <laughs> Who am I? Uh, maybe I should be dressing up as that. But Halloween, so that was kind of something that, I think it was the 1950s, mm. um, that it sort of became, after sort of post-World War II, uh, I think that there was always people that, that dressed up and, and kind of celebrated because there was a lot of Irish um, folks that settled really all across our country yeah with the big out west during the gold rush a lot of the people that landed on the sort of 
the pond between Ireland and Boston is really what we're talking about because they're they're kind of on that side of the ocean. Um, and so, but during the Great Gold Rush, a lot of so that it sort of started in, in like kind of the remember people were really poor. Uh, for most of in the middling class that evolved during the industrial era of the 19th century, mm. that was mid 19th century, and people were still really poor. So giving out candy or anything like that just sort of wasn't done. It's like the TV dinners; they kind of evolved after World War II in the 1950s to make it easier on all of these new housewives yeah. because before they factories and now all of a sudden there were suburban homes you know suburbia occurred because of world war ii i mean we started building more and more houses whereas before people were in mostly cities in these tenement buildings because of the poverty level i mean we don't even think about this but the public school system wasn't even in place for the entire 20th century you know children yeah. actually worked so um you know this is kind of a um kind of a, a 1950s advent um, of like having more money and 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 being able to buy homes and and suddenly co- buying a costume right. um, was okay or making costumes you know spending money to, to do anything extra just didn't happen especially during the depression era you know so it, about 20 years later it was possible again just simply because of more money was coming in after World War Two. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely definitely kind of a. Yeah, I, I think the point of the history of, you know, Depression era and people going around and getting free food was probably a, <laughs> a good idea, like yeah. around that in the war. And then in the 50s, it explodes because everything exploded in the U.S. in the 50s. I know uh, right. when you go out to Europe, it spread more around Europe in the last uh, 30 years or so. I mean, the mm-hmm. Irish still, I was in Copenhagen once during Halloween and... The I you you could they didn't really celebrate it, but uh, the Irish pub was having like a Halloween celebration yeah, from that origin. All Hallows Eve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And people were kind of dressing up and doing stuff. But I hear like in the Netherlands and other places now that Pete they actually so I mean. <laughs> You're you're in some other country and you're like, what? We could make the thirty first and walk around in cool, scary costumes and get, yeah. <laughs> get food. Well, I mean, maybe it's, not North it's Korea and Iran, but you know, in the globalization of our world, you know, the technology yeah. brings these ideas around the world. Well, so, and what you're really talking about is sort of postmodern era advent. Yeah. So, postmodern is a cultural shift. In, in sort of Western world thinking that occurs after World War II because the postmodern way of thinking is, is actually like a thumbnail sketch is sort of like, um, you know, every individual matters. Everybody is equally valid and valuable. That's at least yeah. a theory, you know, in practice it's not true always, <laughs> but it is much better than it was 50 or 60 years ago sure. or 70 years ago even at this point. Um, and, uh, and so before that, however, was sort of modern. Uh, it's called modern, modernist thinking, modernism. And modernism, and again, another thumbnail sketch is basically looking to the, toward the greater good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so only one solution, um, and that kind of, it, you know, for me, it always makes me think about. It sort of reflects the final solution that Hitler came up with. So Hitler was the turning point, that whole horrible mess of World War II, and, and yeah. basically trying to exterminate an entire people yeah. and, and and anybody else. And then after they kind of kind of run out of Jews, they're like, hey, who else can we kill? You know? <laughs> who else do we want to get rid of? This is working. This yeah. is working. Ugh. You know, we the world is letting us do this. Let's 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 try to get rid of other people like these disabled people and black people and gypsies yeah. and now oh, who who else? Who else? You know, elderly. They just were wholesale killing literally yeah. you know, twelve million people that weren't soldiers that didn't die in war were exterminated mm. from the earth and all their their family lines and everything. So so that modernism wasn't working for the world anymore. And so postmodernism developed after World War II as this kind of idea that individuals matter. And only because individuals matter, like children, do we, do we have the public school system, the community college system, which developed in the 60s, mm-hmm. in part because of Vietnam vets and, and Korean War veterans who came back from war and needed some training, but couldn't afford colleges, you know. So, yeah. so the, the whole idea of federal and state colleges kind of started to develop. So individuals matter, mattering more. 
um, just kind of helped our society evolve in ways that we don't often think. And it was all goes back to this cultural shift in thinking in the Western world, right? So there we go. And then you should just dress Ooh. up and go out and get free candy. That's right. Yeah, and iPhones and eye technology, yeah. and everybody spends thousands of dollars a year on themselves for personal tech so, electronics. You know, I gotta know what's That's what's your favorite. What's your favorite? Uh, not to. Not to change the subject. <laughs> no, it's, it's, that's a great in depth. I mean, it, it's oh, yeah. totally like we do. We I do. got wet just talking about we, it right now. That's right. Right. My nipples are hard. Mm. Yeah, me too. Uh, so, <laughs> have I told you lately that I love you? No, we, 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 we talk about the the, yeah. the we we, get, we go deep on the history here. We do, we do. But I I I'm dying because see the problem is I don't know what's going on out in the world right now and so yeah. th- i gotta get caught up and and i'm supposed to go see something tonight which we can talk about a little bit later mm-hmm. but uh but i want to know what like your favorite halloween scene is in a movie Ooh. Ooh. oh you're asking me yeah i can tell you right off right off the bat i know exactly it's from hocus pocus the, hocus you know the original pocus. a new one is being worked on yeah oh, yes boy. the scene where bet midler's character oh, goes yeah. on stage and does her song i've put a spell on you and now you're mine and it's this whole like a broadway show basically and actually it became a broadway show that's right, screaming. It's a show uh, it that Disney runs. Yeah, I mean, I loved that scene. Sarah Jessica Parker is in it. Yeah. It was just fantastic. The whole the, the whole thing was great. I, I loved it. It's not scary. I'm sorry. It's, it's not just scary, a fun little... But, uh, yeah. It is. And I always have to go back to Tony Moran. Um, you know, in the, I think he was the Chainsaw Guy. Mm. I met him last year. Um, I, I do this, this, uh, this thing I do called Emma Kids. And I, I help kids, you know, different homeless, you know, kids with cancer all over the world now. Um, so, so this was one of the events I did. I, I took a, a, a person, a survivor of childhood cancer, and we, he, me, his grandfather and his mom came with me, and we went out and met Tony Moran in Salem. Actually, this time uh, last year, I was in Salem, <laughs> Massachusetts, the most haunted town in America. Right. Yeah. And uh, we were hanging out with, you know. Um, Basically, chainsaw guy. Oh no, axe. I think he was the axe. Was he the chit 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 guy? He was. He was the. Uh, <laughs> God, I'm so bad at this. I should be better. But you know what? I've I've been eating so many carbs, boys. <laughs> Halloween is a bad time for me. I just hear it's been three musketeers. I don't Ooh. know what's wrong with me, but I have a serious disconnect when it comes to nougat. I can't like control <laughs> myself. And then I went hiking at this like apple farm area, and yeah. and and. And and I, I I smelled the donuts that they were cooking, mm. like the the apple cider Ooh. fry cakes. Yeah. And last yeah. weekend, I bought like a dozen of them, and and all I can say is there's no more left. <laughs> right. Like it's been really bad. I work out a lot, like a lot, a lot every day for hours every day, but still. Yeah. My brain is is definitely what is going on? Why are you on all these cards? Stop it! Stop yep. eating candy and donuts. That's like really interesting too, because uh, I remember when I when I when I was a wee lad about town, uh, we would go. You know, when we go trick or treating, we would get you know the standard you know uh, candy bars, what have you. But we'd also get like home baked stuff. There's always the people you would ring the doorbell and they'd give you like the popcorn balls, mm-hmm. right? And they mm-hmm. were just, I love those things, man. I know. And uh, of course, you know nowadays people. We apples. remember back in the days putting razor blades oh, and yeah. stuff apples like that. Apples with razor blades. Scare of that. Um, you know, injecting really that. poison to <laughs> right. fruits. You know, right? No, it was always like, you know. Remember, kids, you, yeah. you don't accept anything that's not wrapped up and sealed straight from the store. It's like, you know, the apples. And then the uh, used to be the mom, you know, you'd have to inspect everything. Right. Especially if someone. Yeah. It's so weird because today, what do you want to give a kid? Fruit. Yeah. An orange, a candy. But it's like, mm-mm, 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 just wrapped yeah. chemicals in a bag. From a store, <laughs> Monsanto, right? You know, yeah, but I mean, you're right. It in, is sad. In the old days, you know, the popcorn balls. You had the carameled apples. 
Yeah. You know, you get those. And, and so you'd get to those tons, are pretty tons good. of like the homemade, you know, I baked cookies for you, you know. And yeah, that's it what was, I'm saying. Grandma. It was, it was great. Speaking of which, just just as an aside. Yes. Doc, just just hang on because what what happens is today since we're it's not Halloween but it's Halloween's Eve, uh, Jason is trick or treating with me yes. there at the house. Yes. So since Jason is is actually brought this up, okay. Jason, do you yeah. want to? Oh, you look so cute in your nineteen oh. twenties football. Do you want to? Do you want to take a little? Just, okay. Oh no, just look in there. Just grab. I, Grandma's got some good things for you in there. Oh, look at that! Wow, I got the fun size of Heinz ketchup. You know, you never know when you're going to need ketchup, Jason. I know. Funny, funny story, by the way. I can't. Oh, I can't let this go. Uh, one time at Christmas, poor Buddha, one of his family members, they all congregate on Christmas, and I, I, I swear, one of his Christmas presents was a bottle of ketchup. Oh, you're. Oh, I'm just. Yeah. No. I, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, now, it, now, now, now you've oh. got a, uh, some some ketchup just in case. Yeah. You, you go to the burger joint and you run out of ketchup. There's some ketchup for your fries. Listen, you never you never know when you're gonna run into a ketchup emergency. So I mean, I think we need one for. It's doc. for fake blood. It's for fake blood. Oh, there, oh yes. It, it, perfect. Exactly. The uh, there we go. The default fake blood. <laughs> right. That kids yes, would ketchup. use the old ketchup packets, right? Yeah. You know, Add a yeah. little jelly in there, and it yeah. could be like brains and blood. Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. Ooh. And your mom would oh, go I'm all the, over that. in the refrigerator yeah. around Halloween time. Go, where, where, where's the damn ketchup? Bobby ran off with the ketchup <laughs> again. Wait a minute. I, you know. I had a jar of uh, spaghetti sauce in here. Where did it go? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well, you know, what what else can you do with a can of spaghettios, I think, right? I think we need uh, we need to draw one for Doc. Oh, Doc yeah. Housel is not here, but virtually, Doc, we I virtually we think you should trick or treat <laughs> okay, too. Gonna... So Jason is going to get your treat, gonna... okay? Oh yes, that? Jason, you have to eat. Oh, oh, Doc, Doc, you scored. Are you ready for this? You got yourself yeah. a packet of instant grits. Oh, you know what? I fucking love grits. I'm so sorry. I <laughs> yes. <love> grits. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. I know. Grits. Sharp cheddar to that. Black pepper. Good. <laughs> so I got ketchup and grits. You know, Rebecca, you'll never know when you might be hungry for grits. So just carry that in your in your pocket there. <laughs> That's your right. Well, you can... I'm hungry for grits all the time. All you got to do is add hot water, dear. Doc Housel, do you, yeah, yeah. Is, is that grits? In your, is that grits in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? Oh gosh, <laughs> grits. It's actually my vibrator, but no. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a Monday morning. How are you? I did. Put... Hey, by the way, I have to just say that I could remember Tony Moran was in the 1976 film Halloween as mm. Mike Myers. He's the original Mike Myers. And oh. I just have to apologize for my brain fog. Okay. My carb-induced brain fog. I wanted to just let the audience know that that's who Tony Moran is and where he's from. And he's, like, classic. And I love that movie. That's, like, one of my very favorite scary Halloween movies. The original And Halloween. best Halloween character. Yeah, the original oh, yeah. guy. He's the original guy. And yeah. he's, like, super nice, too. He's a sweetheart. Yeah, it, so it's a great... I love him. I, I, somebody... When I was younger, it's like I went over to people's house, you know, and like it's a kind of Halloween party and then the cable TV and they're playing mm-hmm. the original Halloween or back yeah. in the day when you'd rent the VHS and it's Friday like that was a good one. Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. And Jamie Lee Curtis. Come on. Oh, hey. Yeah. You, you know. got to do that. Oh, baby. And she had it in her. I'd turn for her. Well, it's, her mom was uh, uh, um well, she, she was uh, daughter of T- Tony, right? Tony yeah, Curtis. And and Tony and Curtis, is, yeah. Not Vivian Lee. Uh, not Vivian Lee. Um, ooh. Uh, sorry. Can't remember her first name. Uh, she was in Psycho. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. So, anyway. Yeah. I, I always say Vivian Lee, and it's not Vivian Lee. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll find her first name. Gotcha. I always do that. Vivian Lee, Gone with the Wind. That's this right. one was... So, okay. So, I got a question, then. Uh, while we're looking up the uh, v- Vivian, uh, uh, let me that. throw it out there. Doc, what hands down, okay, what is your most favorite Halloween movie? Oh, ever? Ever. You, um, something you've got to okay. see. Janet. Say, say that again? I'm going to tell you exactly what it is because I watch it every day, and I'm not joking. Okay. Hotel Transylvania and Hotel Transylvania 2. 
to me, they go together. Those are my very favorite movies. Okay. Um, that are based. I know that's maybe a disappointment because it's like you know. Um, oh, uh, her parents. By the way, I just wanted to clarify. Jamie Lee Curtis's parents are Janet Lee and Tony Curtis. Yeah, that's I there. Was, we go. That, I always say. I always have a, v- a, a brain block and 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 like Vivian Janet Lee. Hey, but yes, that was, was Tony that was, Curtis and that was better than mine. It, the first name that popped up to my head was Harper Lee. <laughs> oh, jeez, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Harper Lee, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I like I like Hotel Transylvania. I like animated films. So okay, okay. I you know I also like Book of the Dead. That's another great one that uh-huh. I like to watch around Halloween time. But I I watch Hotel Transylvania. It, that's how I go to sleep every night. So right. like, <laughs> really? I, I, I like, yeah, I'm not kidding. I, it just left Netflix, sadly, on October 27th, but uh, FX has it now. Hmm. And so I just turn it on on demand and I just uh, play my little movie. There Every night I watch Hotel Transylvania because I feel like Hotel. it's like a happy family. And I <laughs> Welcome to the Hotel Transylvania. Anyway, that's, a, that's a, when eagles go bad. I don't know if I've seen that one. Uh, yeah, I, I want, Adam yeah. Sandler, you know. Oh, yeah. he's the uh, Adam Sandler. It's, a, it's Disney of owned. Pro- it's Disney owned property. Gotcha. So you know, Adam Sandler is the voice of basically Dracula, and um, you know, he's got a, a little daughter who's you know a vampire too, and and she ends up marrying this California slacker guy, <laughs> which is funny, you know. And they have a little red-headed vampire child, so it's great. I love it. See, that's, that's, <laughs> Frankenstein, isn't it? The mummy, the wolf man who has like a million kids. See, that, that know, to me sounds like, like runs what I grew after up with. Yeah. That's, that sounds like what I grew up with, like the TV shows, like the, the Munsters the mon- and the Adams Family. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yes. Those were great Adam's shows. Family, I know, my God. Do you remember this? No, you probably don't because it, it was just the pilot. Only the pilot ran. It was called Mockingbird Lane. Yes. And it was a monster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was so mm, good. And I, You know, it had Brian Singer was the director. And he's the director for X-Men, uh, you know, like right. a lot of the X-Men films. Not the Brat Retner one. He, he's. He, he not let's not talk about that one. But Brian Singer is sort of main director for the X Men film. I mean, you know, Brett Ratner is fine. It's just that you know he's kind of a brat anyway, um, which I'm totally allowed to say. I think I don't know. I'm sure like I'll get a call or something. Yeah. That was really not Afterwards. nice of you. Or something. <laughs> like mm-hmm. too bad. It's the truth. I I can only speak the truth. I do lie, but only when I absolutely have to, you know, like to survive. But otherwise, it's. <laughs> Gotcha. You can call us and leave us a voicemail, and we'll forward it. Right. <laughs> I so love Adam's family and Munsters. You know, there's going to be a new Munsters coming out, and what? I think of it was course. partly inspired because of Mockingbird Lane. Mockingbird Lane had like, I think it was something like four to six million viewers for the pilot, mm. which is a lot of people. Uh, but it didn't get the green light for a full season, and it had um, Rebecca Romaine Stamos is now married to that guy Jerry. Uh, last name anybody? Please help me with that. No, I have to look it up. <laughs> it's it's Monday morning. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you're barking up the wrong tree on a Monday. It's like <laughs> he looks. I think he looks a lot like um, he looks a lot like uh, John Stamos, in, in my opinion. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, that's who she ended up marrying. He was in um, Sliders. The guy. Oh, Jerry. Uh, 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 yes, Con- Con- Jerry O'Connell. The wrong thing. Yes, yes, thank you, Jerry O'Connell. It just popped up. They got married in 2007. Gotcha, yeah. She married, uh, she was in, um, in 2005. So, uh, you know, yeah, so he kind of looks to me a lot like John Stamos. But anyway, um, yeah, he was in it. Um, uh, Eddie Izzard was in it. Yeah. Uh, there was, like, a lot Ooh. of great people in it. It was a great cast. But, yeah, I know it really was. It's, like, worth finding on YouTube or something. <laughs> it's only one episode, but I really, really liked it. Nice. Uh, so I, I kind of want it to come back, you know, I'm sad. Also, I liked, um, there was like another show that was like one season that had all these great actors in it and, and a lot of actors that ended up showing up in things later on, like Teen Wolf and Twilight. And hmm. um, I think it was called The the Gate, The Gate, maybe. Um, it was about a neighborhood, basically a suburban neighborhood. You can find it on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Um, a suburban neighborhood where, like, vampires and witches and all these, like, mystical creatures kind of, like, live in this, like, gated community. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, kind of werewolves are in it, and this is kind of cool. I, I miss stuff like that, like stuff like Teen Wolf, you know. Yeah, uh, I guess a lot yeah. of my work does revolve around horror, you know, and supernatural horror stuff, but but the miss whole, it. Miss all the good stuff. But like that, yeah, like you say, that like um, that whole, like, I remember, like, with the Munsters. Yeah. With Adam's Family, too. You know, the the whole horror comedy thing, the whole genre. Ab- Abbott like, and Costa will meet Frankenstein. Oh, right? oh. Come on. Boom, I love that. Doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Abbott and Costello yeah. meet Frankenstein. There was yep. one, the, the, the Three Stooges yes. had one, too. Uh-huh. They had a, a, a horror horror uh, flick. Right. You right, know? right, right. So, yeah, I love those. I, I love... <laughs> Gosh, it's tough. You know, I like I like the Adams family, but when mm-hmm. you see Fred Gwynn oh, in, yeah. in the Munsters, he's just yeah. so brilliant. Yeah, he's a brilliant actor too. Oh, totally, totally amazing. It, that, those concepts were so fantastic, and really, uh, just we need that more. Like, kind yes. of, it's like the Happy Family, but they're monsters, right? But they're actually not <laughs> monsters. The, the Happy Families that we see that don't look like monsters are often okay. the monsters on the inside. I've got right. it. I've got it. We're spitballing it here. Okay, here we this go. This is here what we, we do, yeah. Doc Haswell, and you can play with us right now. Excellent. So here's part, yeah. of, part of what we do okay. is Jason and I, it ends up like during the show, we'll spitball a series, just like Hollywood. But sure. we're not in Hollywood. We'll just sit at the desk, and we'll concept it out, and we're like ready to go, and then nothing happens after that. So <laughs> someone is going to be listening to these shows, yeah. and in about five to ten years' time, you're going to see all these series that at some point we mentioned this concept hey, on the show. We thought of that. So here yeah. it is. Here it is. Uh, uh, you've got the Munsters. you got the Adams Family back in the, uh, the 60s, right? Sure. The, the height of the nuclear family. What do we have today? Not so nuclear anymore. Yeah. Not a nuclear family. Yeah. You know, uh, mom and dad are split, you know. Mm. Yeah, mom's got a boyfriend. Dad's got a boyfriend. Who knows in the 2017, right? <laughs> sure. Um, and so, 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 so it is a, it's, it's, you, you have the Frankenstein, you have the vampire, you have all the characters in kind of a non nuclear kind of uh, modern family. Like, uh, you know, they're fighting over custody of the little vampire, mm. you know, mm-hmm. it is, things are, you know, going wrong, well, you know. Well, actually, oh, it's my, my, my weekend with, uh, with, uh, uh, cousin it you know something like that you know yeah so something Doc like normal that. you gotta you gotta hear this there's there's a show on netflix right now there you go uh, called little evil little evil oh. and it's about a normal guy who marries this woman who happened to have been in a satanic cult Ooh, you know but she's wow. not she's now she's hot and normal now she's just normal she's just you know super hot she has this like kid and he doesn't know that actually this kid is a product of a ritual from a satanic cult Oh. And is the son of Satan, and it's called Little Evil. And I watched it maybe a month ago. And um, the, the one of the guys that stars in um, Ghosted, which is on, uh, yeah. I, I can't remember the network, but Fox. it's very funny with my friend Craig. Oh, I still love that show. Oh yeah, Craig. It's good. so freaking funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, it's really really funny. So yeah, we like him. Um, uh, he's great. Uh, he's really he's really he like in, in real life. He's, He's really Craig funny. Robinson, Craig, Robert, <laughs> Craig T. Robinson. Yeah, Craig yeah. T. Robinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Craig T. Nelson, right? I know. Yeah, right, sometimes right. I'll say that, and I'll be like, he's like, I'm not the coach. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. The <laughs> coach. Coach. Just a pop culture, you this know, sounds like a, clip. It, that sounds like a good show. I mean, the concept. I like the concept. Yeah. It's very funny. It's kind of like a, a parody of X-Files. And, you know, for a while I was representing all these paranormal reality stars uh, so it's kind of funny to me to see this, you know, this, the way that they kind of parody, you know, that sense yeah. of like all these crazy things happening and, you know, the, ta- you know, videoing these things. Oh, why are you here? Why are you here? You know, like, it's kind of funny. Um, I, I like it. <laughs> right. I, I always, and that and the Orville, which is oh, yeah. Seth MacFarlane's um, show where they're like the Star, Star Trek Yep. But uh, it's, a, it's like a with sort of very 21st century millennial dialogue. Right. Yeah. Even though Seth MacFarlane is not a millennial. We can, I mean, <laughs> we can move into... married to a woman who's like 20 years younger. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we can move into the, uh, into the uh, yeah, it's kind of the space sci-fi because we're, we're all here. Yeah. The Orville. Sure. I'm glad you mentioned that. We're loving the Orville over oh, yeah. here. Love I think show. I think everyone is. I think mm-hmm. they're getting good numbers because it right. kind of has that Star Trek The Next Generation vibe to it with 
Seth MacFarlane's kind of take on it. Right. You yeah. know, and yeah. last. Uh, and, and go ahead. So I was going to say, and it has more of a um, like 21st century, like a lot of the commentary that they yeah. that they do. You know, the, yeah. the social commentary that's that's embedded in the scripts and and in the show itself. You know, it's kind of interesting. Charlize Theron was on that. Oh recently, yeah, very, very recently. Yeah, about I, two weeks ago, she her episode aired. Yeah. I like the pilot. It's pretty but interesting. I, yeah, I like the pilot, but I noticed people said that they after the pilot that they were surprised at the episodes and that they liked the episodes and they liked the you know he's still throwing in the Star Trek moral plays and everyone's like okay cool you know <laughs> and it's like well <laughs> he produced Cosmos he's like into that he he may be like Mister Family Guy American you know yeah but he's also like you know all down with the. Uh, you know Stephen Hawking, uh, um, Neil Carl DeGrasse, Sagan, man. Carl yeah, Sagan Cosmos, kind of yeah. vibe, you know. And, yeah. and I've heard him. I've heard him talk. He, uh, I'm, you've probably heard this as well, but I've heard him talk in interviews and say he feels that media right now in sci-fi is so dystopian that he he wants you know he grew up on something different. Star yeah. Trek not being a dystopian. Right. Originally, not being a dystopian vision of the future, that uh, you know, <laughs> that he wanted something that people could wrap their heads around that that had hope for the future, <laughs> not, right? Yeah. Not uh, you know, right? Not uh, you know, not not the crazy clown nightmare we live in right now, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I was yes, gonna... humanity comes together. Woo! <laughs> yeah, like look when you go watch the original RoboCop and you go. Damn, they really yeah. nailed that one, didn't they? Right. <laughs> I mean, oh, Detroit so many really is like that. Now. Yeah, thanks, Paul Verhoeven, who had insight into where we were going as a society. Right. We thought it was fun in games back then. That's right, yeah. Little, little did we know. Yeah. But, uh, well, what's funny about RoboCop is that I'm going to be partially robotic very soon. My well, leg, I'm getting a an exoskeleton on my leg that's going to allow me to I mean I, I walk and I, I hike and I do all this stuff I work out quite a lot but I you know I had a brain tumor removed um, the first one was 27 years ago and the oh. second one was 17 years ago so I it, uh, it part of my motor cortex was removed too and so even though I have a leg it just no signals get there because there's nothing for the for the signals to originate from so I, I'm actually getting, there's, there's braces now. Uh, they're not really braces. It's an exoskeleton. It goes on the outside. It doesn't go under pants like the one I wear now. You wouldn't even know. Like, I've been on stage with celebrities. Nobody knows I even have that, you know. Hmm. So, um, but now, but it will compensate for, like, my balance issues. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, an incredibly expensive product. But, um, yeah, I'm going to be, like, I mean, I already have titanium in my skull, you know. Like, I can't go through airports without setting off all kinds of alarms. So, in a lot of ways, I'm kind of like a, the beginning of the RoboCop evolution, that's, that's except right. I'm not a cop, but I can wear the uniform in certain sexual situations. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just throw it in. People have to stay awake during this hour. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, uh, one, Unpredictable one... things, you know? Unpred... What about Stranger Things? Right. Yeah, let's talk about Stranger Things. Thank you, God. I died and went to heaven. I just yeah. binge watched it this weekend, and my because it came out on Friday. Yeah. Um, and and it is just like the writing. Okay, so you'll notice in season two for uh, these aren't really major spoilers, but I'm just going to say that you'll notice storylines from films and and TV shows and even books uh, that are sort of sci-fi oriented. And you're like, hey, they took it from here or there or whatever. But remember, the second season takes place in 1984, right. pre all the things that you're going to recognize in the season. So it's just like a layer of pop culture mythology. Like, like Stranger Things, the, the claim is that this is sort of what really happened in 1983, 1984. And I'm guessing, I think that I just uh, read uh, that it, they think it may go um, possibly four total seasons. Nice. Um, just because, uh, as the, one of the uh, creators said, like, how are you going to, you just can't keep having these kids, like, end up in, like, these weird, right, <laughs> in yeah. these weird situations. Like, at some point, that has to end, like Buffy, you know, the Buffy verse. At some point, it had to end and grow, or grow up, which was what Angel really was, sort of like the, the growing up 
after that, no more high school stuff. It had to kind of have a different spinoff. Right. So, um, no, I love Stranger Things. I thought the writing, I, I'm, I'm going to say, as like an expert on writing in particular, you know, the cinematography was amazing. The writing was amazing. The acting was fantastic. Right, yeah. Winona Ryder, what? She kills it. Her role, you know what? Yeah. I worked with Sean Astin, too. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, in, he's in this season. Oh, and similar I, to the yeah. strain, he you know he meets another uh, kind of sticky end. Spoiler yeah. alert! Um, but uh, you know that's kind of his role. Oh, and, that and, upset and me. Sean, that upset me so much when I, Bo- when Bob it got really? it. Yeah, when Bob it. got it. it. Oh so you gotta, man, you can't spoil it for me. I have yet okay, to see sorry. this we whole thing. We so so yeah, we're trying not to spoil too much <laughs> there, but uh, you know it has been out for a few days, so I know <laughs> <laughs> people are going to be talking about it. Um, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, no, I think that uh, Sean Astin, a lot of the, the roles he's taken in things like The Strain and Stranger Things, the recent roles are because he can now do the Comic-Con circuit. And, and even though we might not like what happens to his character, Jason, yeah. what's really great is that now the questions at Comic-Con will all be about what was it like playing that scene? Because that's what I worked with him at Comic-Con. I was, you know, the host. I was the MC. And I would be interviewing him live on stage, and a lot of people would ask about, like, the Goonies. Even, you know, yeah. cause he's, a, he's an Emmy-winning actor. He yeah. was in Lord of the Rings, the Goonies, Rudy. You know, I had the whole right. audience chanting, Rudy, Rudy. Right. So he'll be at Comic-Con in the future because of this appearance this season on Stranger Things. And people yeah. will be asking him questions like, what was that scene like? You know, because that's the cool, those are the cool questions. So right, when yeah. we, don't, we might not like that it's character, but this basically gives him the ability to do basically a Comic Con tour because of this season and his 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 appearances on the strain, yeah. which is you know vampire supernatural pop culture stuff still on TV. Right. Well, not, not only that, but Sean Astin is a fantastic actor. And, uh, oh my God, he's really, really, and he's a he's a fantastic human being too. Yeah, yeah. He's he's so real and so good. It wasn't the case with every celebrity I worked with, but I was in the green room um, with, and he and I hadn't worked with him yet. And actually, we hadn't been. We were going to work together, I think, later that day. That might have been the first time I met him. But it was in the green room before we met. He didn't know me from anybody. And I was sitting there with, speaking of Halloween stuff, ghost, uh, the original Ghost uh, Hunters, uh, Grant Wilson, mm-hmm. who is someone I knew from my teen years. Um, he and Seth MacFarlane grew up in the Rhode Island area, and I spent a lot of time at Rocky Point Park, which is in Rhode Island. I grew up in Boston, like Greater Boston. So, you know, yeah. I kind of knew Grant uh, from, from those, that kind of period. We're about the same age, so that period of my life. Yeah. And um, I'm sitting there with with uh, with a, an, a, and another girl uh, who was on a, a new show at the time. And like he didn't know any of us. He sat down with us and he just started talking to us. He didn't know us from anybody. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I have no idea Sorry. why that happened. <laughs> was that was that feedback or something? I no, yeah, no, there was no. a little, a little, uh, little audio feedback, and uh, but no, uh, you know, qu- quick Sean Aston aside, not, not a lot of people know this, but uh, of course, remember he is the son of what John Aston, uh, yeah, Gomez of the original and Patty Duke, yeah, and Patty Duke, right? And, you know, the original Who passed uh, away, yeah, very, very sad for him. It was yeah. a really rough one for him. Yeah. Okay, Doc. Who is your favorite character from Stranger Things? Um, who's my favorite character from Stranger Things? Yeah. My favorite character on Stranger Things has to be Eleven. Oh, I yes. love Eleven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, she's my girl. She's like girl power all the way, and I love the romance between her and Mike. Um, I think that that's just super sweet and special. And, you know, everybody, every girl sort of wishes that uh, they had a Mike <laughs> at that age. Right, right. Never, yeah. never happens. But uh, would have been great. I like. I'm watching these kids. I'm like, I don't. I never had cool friends like this. Where were they right. in 1983, 1984? Because I did not have cool friends. You know, it was not like that. There uh, weren't any geeks in my group. Well, you should have came out and yeah, hung out. I was, the, I was Portland, geek. Oregon, man. We we had the Buddha. You know, he. I know. He's, I really was born in like the wrong time, the wrong place. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, my my favorite character, uh, Stranger Thing, is uh, Dustin. You know where he, Oh, I love Dustin. Yeah, he's it, so great. And and the hair, 
the hair. Yes. He, he has like something amazing with his hair, you know, so everybody should keep an eye out for that if you haven't finished watching it. But right, he's the very so last great. Episode, I did yeah. I did like Steve too. Yeah. Steve was good. Right. He turned out to be a really great guy. And also Chief Hopper. I am I'm, I'm a, oh, a he, Chief I Hopper. Love fan Jim uh, Hopper, he's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, no, I loved him, and the and the kind of the chemistry between him and Winona Ryder. Right. So like when the season starts, you kind of expect it to be Jim Hopper and Winona Ryder's character, but it's it's not. It's like you know Sean Astin is in, is, <laughs> is in it, Bob it, Bob who works at Radio Shack and can uh, write Basic. Remember Basic? I was like, yep. oh my god, I learned this at Computer Camp. Like. <laughs> I was in seventh grade and I learned basic at computer camp. I was like, "Oh my god, this yeah. is crazy!" I haven't heard that in so long. Yeah. So I was loving it. There's a lot of nostalgia there for people that you know were alive in the '80s. You know, yes. you, know, you don't even have to have been. My son was born at the end of that decade, believe it or not, because I had him. I was literally a teenager, and uh, so he kind of has this '80s sensibility and I identifies with that decade, even though yeah. I was basically a kid. When he was born, and he, uh, so he's like watched all of Magnum P.I. and every 80s show ever, Miami Vice. He went through a Miami Vice period. <laughs> Def nice. Leppard is his favorite group. Right. I mean, like, it's very funny. If you if you have any connection to the 80s at all, even if you weren't born in it, is kind of my point, mm -hmm. you, you will really enjoy the nostalgia. The nostalgia stars are what make the Comic-Con sort of thing happening in right now in the yeah. last five or six years it sort of exploded emerald city is the big one near you guys but right. um you know wizard world walkers and stalkers all these different companies kind of popping up yeah, we got, uh, that that's part of where this comes from we had wizard world in fact the reason there was there was noise here as the cable got unplugged and i was trying to find jason interviewing grant wilson at comic-con I, 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 oh, yeah, we actually had that right. yeah i yeah. still can't believe they let me Greg lose we we set that up, didn't we? Or yep. was that at, at Wizard World? You that and I, we Wizard. did it on the yeah. radio. I had him call yeah. in, right? Right, Grant, and then we Never met him. Uh, we, yeah, we met him the next day at at Wizard World. And, yeah, uh, we uh, shot yeah. some shot some footage with him and stuff. Very cool. Oh, great! Yeah. yeah, he's such a good guy, isn't he? He's just amazing. Oh, yeah, really fantastic. Although I was. You know, I was in full shtick mode that day. You know, mm -hmm. you know, yucky, <laughs> yucky, 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 and I don't know if he, I don't know if he really didn't know what to make of me, right? Cause Pretty here much comes not. This, here comes this fat bald dude up to him, and he's meeting and greeting, and here I am, you know, doing shtick. And uh, great guy though. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he loved you. You know, I know we talked about it since. He was like, "Oh, I miss." You know, we we would sometimes do interviews. Yeah. Yeah, Grant Wilson. Yeah, I, I I miss the fact that he's not on, you know, like doing the Ghost Hunter stuff anymore. Yeah, I know. I know a lot of those shows have kind of gone, you know, south in a, in a way, um, literally. But Amy Bruni has a new series out uh, that looks good. She's another person I worked with, and she was part of Grant's original team mm -hmm. um, on on Ghost Hunters. So in Taps, she was part of the original Taps people. So she's she's got a show. I know that like um, I've had uh, Patrick um, Doyle come on your show before, yes. and he was um, Ghost Mine, mm -hmm. and. Um, He's now, he's actually in Vancouver now, and he's been doing a ton of work as an extra. He was just on an, an episode that aired on Riverdale, aired last week on Riverdale. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, How's that Yeah, one? I mean, he's kind of, Riverdale is so great. If you love Archie hmm. Comics, which, yeah. by the way, just had like a whole bunch of new comics come out about a week ago, um, but you got to, you got to. You gotta dig into the comics, the original comics, but you also have to check out Riverdale. It is so great. I am totally enamored. It's it's like a, it's a little bit of a teen soap opera, mm -hmm. but uh, also has this kind of mystery happening. And these kids have like the, I, I all I can say is in my high school, there's no way this would have happened. Um, <laughs> but you know, they like form brute squads, and you know, it's a little bit Princess Bride-ish. You know, there's like a little which just celebrated its 30th anniversary a few weeks ago too. Right. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, w I was at the, they had big, it was like a, a Regal or some, maybe it was Fathom events. There was some, they had it on the big screen and interviews with Rob Reiner and some of the cast were before and after the, the screening and I got to see it and uh, it was it, it was just as good. I didn't see it in theaters when it first came out, but uh, I got to see it now, <laughs> 30 yeah. years later. 
I don't know how old I was like I was little I was little when that came out so I wouldn't have seen it I had probably no way to get to the theater or I would have I would I want to move to movies yeah because I got questions excellent and I'm bad because not only I see you guys are talking about Stranger Things and I haven't watched it yet. Okay. And I know it's on oh. the list. I know it's on the list because there's a first season and then you're in the second season now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I've been busy. I, I did. I did Twin Peaks. Of course, I had to do that, and I was sure. glad I did. Um, and then uh, I've been keeping up on the Orville and the and the Star Trek Discovery. How are you liking the Star Trek Discovery, by the way? Um, I, I love all Star Trek, so yeah, I just like the, I like the adaptation of it, you know, so it doesn't, whatever it yeah. is, I know some people are kind of like, my brother and I, we, we, we're like weirdly on the same wavelength, even though we're almost 10 years apart. This past summer, we kind of saw each other, there was a couple of big family events in my, in my, uh, on my end of, in my end of the world here, like major ones, ones that cost like me in particular 30 grand. I was like, oh, mm. but it was for celebration. So happy. But we saw each other a few times and we, we, um, he's in Boston and I'm not. And so he kind of said to me, he, he, I'm like, what are you watching now? And he said, he goes, I'm watching Deep Space Nine. And I was actually in the middle of watching season three of Deep Space Nine. And he was in the same place in the same season. And I was like, this is crazy. It's like we're connected. It's like, you know, right. telepathy is real. We're X-Men. But we are definitely Trekkies. And, you know, um, for his, he got married recently. And for his groom's gift, I gave him a Legos um, Millennial, Millennial Falcon. No, Millennium Falcon. Nice. <laughs> I call it the Millennial Falcon is like a joke. But, yeah, yeah so like that we you know, we're like into the whole star wars star trek um i he already has a life-size captain picard and i've already given him like all the models of like klingon dictionaries all the models of the different enterprises and um <laughs> when my work at wizard world i got to meet all of the starship captains and you know including scott Bakula from enterprise which was a lot of fun mm-hmm. but uh, my brother sadly never came out so he never got to meet them and he's one of the biggest like um you know, Sir Pat Stu at Sir Pat Stu on Twitter, Patrick Stewart, who played the poop emoji recently, <laughs> the mm-hmm. emoji, animated emoji film. I mean, he was one of the people I knew in the green room. And of course, Kirk, you know, uh, the original uh, Captain Kirk, also right. TJ Hooker. <laughs> right, yeah. and, and the guy and the guy who does the travel commercials. I mean, you know, I just I love him, too. But he was less friendly. But Patrick Stewart, boy. Man, yeah. he's lovely. Such a guy. I, I loved him. Hmm. So, yeah. yes, I, I, I like the adaptation. I will always like and always support any Star Trek adaptation forever and always. Amen. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. I'm kind of in that boat. It's It's been weird a little bit, but it's picked up, been a little more Star Trek-y in the last couple episodes where it's like, okay, finally, it's kind of starting to feel a little bit like it. it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. So, movies. Yeah. <sighs> See, I haven't kept up on the movies at all. No? So, yeah, and I'm going to supposedly go see one tonight. Uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen the new Blade Runner yet. Yeah, even. me either. Yeah. Oh, I did! I saw it! What you oh think? Oh, my God, I saw the premiere. Yeah. Oh, oh, Good God, things. you know, uh, I, I, okay. Do you want Honest or do you want, what do you want? Do you want Hollywood Rebecca or do you want Honest Rebecca? <laughs> Let's go for a little honest, Rebecca. Yeah, let's, we always let's, yeah. go with okay. that, right? Okay, yeah. let's go there. Okay, you know, I love Harrison Ford because of his connection to Star Wars, mm-hmm. not because he was 34 and had an affair with a 19-year-old um, yeah. while he was filming Star Wars. I don't like that at all. But I, I do I do like him as an actor. He's a fantastic actor. And so I loved seeing him in Blade Runner. Um, but I have to say, I thought that the movie relied a lot on noise. Hmm. And and like a lot of noise, like the noise level was very high. It was it was so. Um, I actually had to go talk to the manager of the th- of the theater while I was in the movie because it was the noise level in the film itself is so high at certain points that it was you just couldn't you couldn't sit there without getting like hearing damage. It was so mm-hmm. bad. And I said for this film, you know, because I know them. Of course, I know the people that run that theater, own the theater at this point. Because they keep inviting me to these screenings, I'm like, you gotta for this film, you gotta turn the volume down on your end because it's just too high and it's not watchable. And like five other people that were in the screening with me got up and said the same thing, and they finally listened. 
Only when a man said it did they listen, but that's another story for another time. (laughs) I really liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. I liked it because of the nostalgia aspect. And in terms of the film itself, ah, there was a lot that I I would have liked to have seen different. Uh, The writing in particular, I think at certain points, really, I loved Robin Wright Penn. Uh, She's a Princess Bride connection. We just talked about that 30th anniversary. And Blade Runner, I think, came out like maybe a week or two before the anniversary of Princess Bride. That was the beginning of her career. Uh, So it was was great to see her in a strong female role. She was in Wonder Woman as a kick-ass, you know, strong female role, too. I love that she's emerged as this. I love, like, the individual aspects of it. But in terms of like the overall writing, the overall story arc, I thought there was a lot left to be desired. And they really hmm. relied a lot, a lot, a lot on noise level and like huh. kind of sweeping. You know, you were talking about your your dislike of this dystopian future, which, of course, Blade Runner is it that. Is. Yeah. And it, it just left you wanting at the end. It, hmm. it, it kind of had this story arc, this storyline where, um, no where the main character... <laughs> No, 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 I'm not going to give any spoilers <laughs> at all. But the, the main story arc, I'll just, I'll just say that the main story arc, you expect it to go in a different direction, and it doesn't. And, and it's not like a surprise or something that intrigues you when it doesn't. It, it's mm-hmm. a letdown. It's yeah, a disappointment. Yeah. It should have gone in that direction. It, 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 it was like, it was, I, I really would like to know what's on the cutting room floor of that movie because I feel like there's something missing, a uh, few things that big things are missing but of course Harrison Ford was great and you know Robin Wright Penn fantastic uh, like so like lot. there were some really good yeah no there were good points uh, to it but I think that the, the overall story needed a lot of work that's interesting and they relied a lot on certain things I didn't like it, it, that's interesting you say that because um, uh, and I like the honest review uh, because <laughs> uh, um, that's kind of the original Blade Runner is like that I mean, the the final cut was not really exactly what Ridley wanted. It was what the producers wanted, and they went back and forth. And there's like four. I, I have a Blu-ray, a boxed Blu-ray of every version of Blade Runner that's available. You can mm. buy it, right? It's the Blade Runner Master Set or whatever. And it, 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 <laughs> it, it I haven't seen it yet. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it even includes a DVD of the original uh, screener cut for audiences, which is oh, like wow. two and a half ah. hours or something. I haven't, yeah. I still have yet to see it, and and you know it's 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 like over long, but <clears throat> but it's interesting because uh, Dennis Villeneuve um, and Hampton Fancher, who wrote the original, um, they you know they wrote this one, and and Dennis is like big big deal he's done a bunch of stuff so i don't know i I gotta see it um uh i'm yeah i'm gonna see it i think it's after i read the reviews of alien covenant i didn't go out to see it Mm. and so i still have got to see alien covenant (laughs) i'm not yeah you gotta I'm not expecting good things i'm probably expecting better from blade runner 2049 though sounds sounds like it's a little bit better I don't know. Did you um, did you like it, Alien Covenant, by the way? I I so I like the Alien franchise. So this Me is too. part of what Me I too. sort of talk. It kind of all just like with Star Trek. I'm pro Star Trek. You know, right. it's like it's like when you're when you're a Boston native like I am, you love all the Boston sports teams, even if one of them has a a fucker named Tom Brady on it, who <laughs> left a nine month pr- pregnant Bridget Moynihan for a supermodel. Yeah. I just think that's reprehensible. You know, he he ghosted her. He left her. Well, pregnant. You know, I was like, yeah. what? Oh, you know, yeah. like so I I I hate that guy, but I support Boston teams no matter what. It's kind of yeah. like that for me. I I love Blade Runner, and and he and it's such a fantastic concept. And it, and but it, I I I just felt like there was a lot missing, and I appreciate that the original writers were there. I appreciate. The whole thing of it, I like adaptation in general. I support adaptation, but man, it, the noise level was just super loud. And uh, I did like yeah. it. They had a they had a little pop culture mythology with one of the uh, sort of main Guardians of the Galaxy characters showing up. I won't say anything more because I don't want to. I don't. I kind of don't want to blow it for you. But oh. um, I just felt like it was a bit of a letdown uh, yeah. overall. Um, yeah. But but I'm glad I saw it, and, and I it was two hours and forty four minutes. Wow. Uh, so, it, yeah. yeah, nearly wow. three hours. That's, so that's sure amazing. Got the time. 
Yeah, it was pretty long, for and so having the yeah. noise level for that long, I was like, Ugh. well, I, I know, can't even think of it. That sounds like a weird theat. That's a um, yeah, theater thing, and those those. Oh man, I I know what you mean. It's like, are, is everyone deaf? Well, it's like, why do we need dialogue in this thing anyway? If we have <laughs> like you know, yeah. super surround sound, boom, bash, boom you know, craziness. Well, That's it was kind of like that. There was me. lacking in dialogue, I felt. It was really lacking. And, and wow. just kind of tired, old uh, themes were being used. Uh, I know yeah. I, I know what they were trying to do. I Like I said, I appreciate what yeah. they were trying to do, but I, I felt like it could have been done a lot better. Maybe the writers that were on the first version shouldn't have written the second version should have just consulted yeah you know um that's yeah. what i feel like there could have been a a, a different set of writers might have um given it because we are you know we are in 2017 and it should have been a little bit fresher than it was i felt like it was uh you know a little tired well yeah i appreciate <laughs> a little 80s tired you know <laughs> yeah i appreciate that review because i i, I gotta tell you Everything that comes out of Hollywood is this reboot kind of yeah. stuff. And so I definitely, even for the money and all the hubbub and, oh, Harrison Ford is in it and all that, uh, all these things that come out that are that are from the past, I, I always... I always take them with a grain of salt, and I, I lower my expectations. I really do. Yeah. It's like, if this thing's going to be fantastic, um, then yeah. I'm going to be pleasantly surprised. If it's right. going to suck, I'm going <laughs> to be like, no, nah, that's pretty much what I expected. That's that's the the norm. Um, I Now, some people may disagree, but I, but I, but I thought, like, for example, uh, doing a new Twin Peaks series... I thought that worked mm -hmm. because there was a lot of, I mean, it still was nostalgic, but then it was a lot of, but David Lynch will just be like, give me money. I'm going to do what I want to do. And if you don't want to, then we won't do it. You yeah. know, and it's like, good, you're an artist. You get to do what you do. And I, I, I thought it was, it was good. And I was pleasantly surprised about that. But that's rare, rare, and, and that's rare, I think, in, in, in yeah. Hollywood. Usually it sucks. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, given that, you know, there's going to be a new Star Wars movie coming out, too. That's right. Uh -huh. In December. Uh -huh. Yep, that's we're, December. Like in December less, 15th, I think. In not more than a couple months. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's already being sold. Tickets are already being sold online on Fandango. Yeah. I mean, they've, they've been... They've been being uh, they've been for sale for a few weeks now. What's, um, what's your prediction on that one? Oh well, this is so boys. I've been writing this book series, which I keep mm -hmm. saying is coming out, and it actually is next year, the end of next year. Um, but I I was delayed this year because of those thirty thousand dollar events that I had yeah. to had to be a part of, and uh, you know that that essentially those events took up all of my time for the last year plus. And they just ended about a month ago, so I'm so happy about that. But also happy in general, because they were great. Anyway, what my first book that's coming out in this Pop Culture Professor book series with my publisher, Wiley, um, is, is um, you know, for the, for the pop culture philosophy books, they, you know, I've had a lot of publishers, so I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, um, yeah, so, so Wiley is the For Dummies people. And, and this Pop Culture Professor book series, the first book that's coming out in the series, is about Star Wars. <laughs> so I can talk to you a lot about that. Um, I think that this is going to be a great installment. It's the third uh, installment in the new sort of Star Wars that uh, for the 21st century that has much more diverse cast than the original cast, cast is great. and the subsequent casts uh, in the 90s. Uh, so it's going to be, I'm really excited about um I'm really excited about about this, and I'm really really excited about the Han Solo film that's going to follow it. Uh, now, aren't you a little worried about that because there's been no. some production problems, like the directors got fired, and uh, and now it's going to be a Ron Howard film. So yeah, no, I'm not worried at all. I'll tell you why because that's normal in Hollywood. All that is normal. Yeah. It, it before something we we just know about it because it's a big franchise you know it's a mega franchise actually it's like a billion dollar franchise oh, and yeah. it's owned by it's disney now you know 
Right. It, it is. It's its own niche. It's its own niche industry. That's exactly right. So, I mean, people, the, I feel like a lot of uh, a lot of this sort of stuff that we are, gets magnified as a result of the, the sort of mega-ness of the entire franchise. But um, I think it's going to be fantastic. I, I just, uh, not just because Ron Howard is doing it, but uh, I think it's going to be really, really great. I'm really excited about it. I, I just want it to be a Ron Howard film or a Ron Howard thing. So we'll have narration. It's like <laughs> Greedo was in the bar, uh, uh, but he didn't shoot first. But that's not what happened. You know, you'll have the ongoing yes. narration of Star Han Wars Solo's. meets Arrested Development. Yeah, exactly. Right? Arrested <laughs> Development or, or the, of the Wonder Years. Daniel right. Stern will be right. narrating Han Solo's life, you know. Yeah. But actually, you know, if that's Savage not what happened. Or Henry Winkler shows up in Han Solo, I will be out of my mind with joy. Oh, my. Because all those things connect. Yeah, right. it's it, all connected. They can put him in costume. And Ben Savage was in, um, he, Fred Savage, rather, was, Fred, in, yeah. um, was in Princess Bride that just had its 30th so all this I stuff is know connecting, that. you know. I did not know. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes, he's the boy who, who the uh, Peter Falk is. He's the boy, yeah. He's Reading the grandson the that's to. being told the story to. Yeah, so Henry Winkler, of course, is in Arrested yeah. Development, worked with Ron Howard and in Happy in Days. It. And he was also one yeah. of my clients, by the way. Henry is one of my clients. Nice. So he's super awesome. Yeah, no, he's... he's. <laughs> yeah. I would love that if we could see them in there. I kind of doubt that would happen. That would be like my pop culture professor wet dream. <laughs> I'm like, oh, all the streams are crossing. It's like but, Ghostbusters you know what? in a good way. They could find, <laughs> they could find their way in the Han Solo film. I mean, if, if Daniel Craig, James Bond, mm -hmm. can be a stormtrooper, <laughs> they can find a way to, to put them in. Right, because you know, Daniel really Craig was in you. The Force Awakens. Right, yeah. Yeah. He was filming yes, James Bond, and they were like, and he was like, that would be kind of cool. And they were like, come on over, we'll suit you up, you know? Well, I, 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 want, <laughs> I want Henry Winkler to play like uh, uh, Han So uh, he, he could be like the uncle of Chewbacca. <laughs> oh. You know, and so instead of the, oh. he just, hey. Oh, there you what go. What do you think? Ah. <laughs> he could be, he could yeah, be. Yeah, that would be great. What was it? Itchy. Was it itchy? <laughs> was it itchy? Was Grandpa Chuba? It was. Uh, it was. It was from the Star Wars holiday yeah. special. That's right. Yeah. Itchy. I actually did a. I did a podcast. Somebody. Some people that do like basically make fun of bad movies. Mm -hmm. They did that, they, and I was the guest. We could do person that. on that show, and uh, we talked about. We talked about that, and I. You know, I had a crush. On Chewbacca's son, when I was old, oh. whatever, I was like little, like little. I was like, you know, like a toddler, and I'm watching this go, like, I like that it, little boy. It was cute. He was like all hairy and stuff. Chewbacca's was so family cute. was like cute. Chewy the, Junior. They were. The little son was cute. And the grandpa was, was crusty, and then uh, Art Carney and Harvey Corman and oh. uh, and Maude, and you know it was just a, you know, I'm sorry, I know Star Wars fans, purists hate this. But I remember seeing it when it came on because it was like, dude, Star Wars Hard Holiday Festival yeah. on TV. How could we not, right? You're yeah, a kid. Yeah. You're into Star Wars. <laughs> of course you're going to watch mm -hmm. it. And then you're going to be like, was that an episode of the Carol Burnett show or what did I just watch there? <laughs> But it had everyone in it, and 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 there are there are bootleg copies. Uh, I may or may not have one <clears throat> because George Lucas tried to erase them from the earth. Mm -hmm. But oh yeah, it's such a wonder. Every every Christmas, every holiday season, we get out the 1978 Star Wars. I need to, see that. I, need to I, see that. I can help you out. You have a little yeah. Star Wars party. Yeah. And it, it it's so it's it's so uh, I, I, I well. Anyway, but uh, it's also the first time you ever meet before The Empire Strikes Back, Boba Fett. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. Boba Fett cartoon. Yes. Mm -hmm. The story oh, of Boba yeah, Fett. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, but... And then, no such great things happened in that time period, right? I mean, I yeah, think that I The know. Hobbit even became animated at that time, right. too. It was, yes, oh, it was so all pop All those little culture. Christmas specials. It was so yeah, pop so culture. You know, it's because the it was the beginning, actually, right? We didn't even yeah. the term pop culture evolved in the 1970s, yeah. so it wasn't even a thing really yet. I mean, I'm part of something called the Pop Culture Association, the TCA, and uh, and and it's been around since like the late 70s, early 80s, because mm. that's really when it started to evolve. And Bowling Green actually is where 
some professor like me decided to, he's like, you know, there's this thing called pop culture. And they actually, today, they actually have a pop culture major. You can, you can graduate, wow. which I think is actually totally <laughs> bad and wrong. <laughs> my, my degrees, I have a lot of them. They're not in pop culture at all. Um, <laughs> because what can you do with that? You know, you, you can't do anything with that, practically speaking. I mean, I guess I have done something with it, but yeah. uh, it's like a whole new niche that I created. It didn't exist before. So, like, I just feel like, you know, no to the pop culture major. It's like these majors that are, you know, marketing and communications or marketing is one thing. Communications is the same as English. Mm, <laughs> you know, right. I'm like, well, uh, you know, these highly specialized degree programs that students pay for but never can, you know, make any money at. Right. I feel bad about that well, no. as an academic. <laughs> Trust me, no one complaint. with a degree is going to make any money anymore anyway once the AI takes over. <laughs> we'll, all be ah. greeters. we'll all be greeters in Walmart at some point. <laughs> As the I kind of think you're right. You talk yeah. about, a, talk about a dystopian in future. <laughs> we all end up as greeters at Walmart. Oh. <laughs> Welcome oh. to Coffee with Curmudgeons. So anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. the Star Wars Christmas special, which is a great pop culture convergence because it is the beginning. Star Wars is like the beginning of a complete offshoot of, of pop culture. I, I don't need to tell you this, Doc Housel. You, you already know this, that that's a launching point that George Lucas you know, that launches, yeah. reboots Star Trek, reboots everything in Hollywood, right? Uh, family movies and all that but then you have the television special which has all the old school comedy yeah. uh, mod and art carney and, right, and, right. and harvey corman and all those folks and, and it, it's kind of sort of this weird like lightning strike of let's take the old and the new mash them together you know and i i like i actually like weird moments like that in pop culture where you see these uncomfortable marriages of yeah. of, uh, <laughs> of of the the thing that's going to launch and change everything with the establishment media which was what it was at the time and it makes for a really weird and uncomfortable two hours <laughs> but it's right. fun or hour or whatever it is yeah, but how? I mean, think about this though. You talk about like the launching, you know, uh, George Lucas, the way it just kind of exploded. I mean, how much of our nostalgia and our pop culture references, uh, just from two guys, yeah. uh, Spielberg and uh, and Lucas? Yeah, you know? I, I, I throw Roddenberry in there Roddenberry, too. Yeah. I throw the Star Trek universe in there. Do I? Mean, right. Um, but I'm, I'm talking like eight. I'm talking like eighties sort of eighties, yeah, iconic yeah. pop 80s, culture moments. Yes. 83, when Stranger Things starts in mm -hmm. 1983, that's the first season, 1983 was a huge year for pop culture right. um, and included things like Ghostbusters, which yep. is why in the second season you'll see that there's a reference, there's a, you know, Ghostbusters plays a role, I'll say, in the yeah. second season. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's because, remember, boys, pop culture, we were talking about the postmodern aspect earlier. It's pop culture is connected to that. 100% because of it, you know, um, we, we, we forget that, that the whole reason it matters what different people want to see yeah. is because of postmodernism. You have all these different genres. Well, why would it matter? Genres don't matter if, if individuals don't matter. The mm. individual becoming sort of like the focus of every industry in the Western world, and that's why there are fast food restaurants with a million different choices. Because individuals matter. You like a you like a double cheeseburger. You don't. You you just want like a baked potato, aka Wendy's. You know, like there's yeah. all these different because individuals matter. It like it connects everything. That's why, as a pop culture professor, my book about Star Wars is not just regurgitating the Star Wars films. It's about explaining all of this cultural context and how it connects us to not just the 70s and the 80s, but also before that, George Lucas used Joseph Campbell, whose yeah. book on um, Hero with a Thousand Faces is yeah. really that work, that seminal work inspired Lucas. In fact, Joseph Campbell spent his last days on the planet at Skywalker Ranch in Marin County, George Lucas's ranch, because uh, the, the his influence was so huge on Lucas's, and yeah. he died in the late 80s, so he died like a decade or so after um, after the movies came out. But George Lucas, as a human being, you know, recognized the, the guy that, like, <laughs> then, of course, you know, there was Valerian, too. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, we don't want to kind of go into that because Lucas never acknowledged the, uh, the similarities between his concept and the Valerian concept, which I don't know if you guys got to see that in the theaters um, based not. on the comic book. Yeah, it so got kind of bad reviews. There's a little bit it? of crossover there. Yeah, didn't yeah. kind of the reviews? What? Didn't the reviews kind of not, kind of not so good of that movie? Well, Am I wrong about so that? what happened with that movie was the budget was so huge that it. it, it there you go. So budgets matter. You know, if you yeah. if you if you if you have if you overspend, which they did, they expected this concept to be. They wanted it to be like Star Wars level. But it's a it's a it's the first in a what would they hoped would be a series of comic book adaptation. Mm. So just like with Batman, think about the original Batman adaptations with you know Michael Keaton in the eighties. We're talking about the eighties pop culture, and mm. you know how it like transforms you know to today with Gotham. Oh my God, Gotham is so scary and so good. I right. love that show. Huge, oh, huge fan God. of Gotham, yeah. It's so good. It's it's so good. And I worked with Morena Baccarat, too. So, like, I have all these, like, you know, people that, like, I've worked with, you know, recently, like, you know, in the last couple of years, and she's on the screen, and I'm like, oh, my God, because when she was sitting next to me, I was saying, at that time, she was on, um, she was on a Showtime show, um, oh, gosh, I can't think of it. She was in the V series. She's in Serenity. She was in all these great shows that I love. Mm -hmm. um, but we kept talking, the audience and I kept talking about how she needed to be incorporated into the superhero genres. We were hoping she would be Wonder Woman, but of course, Gail Gadot kills it. Yeah. Um, but Marina Baccarin is like tall and, you know, kind of strong. And we were like, oh, she would be so great as Wonder Woman. But to see her in Gotham, you know, in this basically the Batman storyline of some part of that pop culture mythology, and then also in Deadpool. Oh, right, blows right. me away. Yeah. Oh, she's going to be a villain, too, in Gotham. She is. She's, a, she's one it. of the new villains. Yeah. So, yeah so happy about so it. So <laughs> one of the things we were we were talking about, you were just talking about budgets, and we were talking about yeah. Star Wars. Uh, Bring it back. <laughs> John, John Molo, mm -hmm. who created the iconic costumes of Star Wars, just passed away. He was 86 years oh. old. He was the costume designer, all those wonderful costumes. And the thing that, that blows you away in this article about him, and he won the Academy Award for these costumes, one of the Academy Awards that Star Wars won. Um, $90,000 was the original Star Wars budget for costumes. Wow. wow. $90,000. Which yeah. I think in in that remember in the seventies too, so that was a lot of money then. I, somebody said it maybe translates to about four hundred thousand dollars. Definitely, it's, it's a half a mil. Yeah, it's a lot of money but, today. But 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 as but as compared to movie making budgets today, oh, right. that's like oh a, yeah, that's like a, a pocket change. <laughs> if you right. think about it, but and, that's because. Salaries were so much less than too. Everything was less. You know, we could go to college for like three thousand dollars a year. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. everything was. Our economy is definitely but even for, for exaggerated a, at this point. For a movie like that, where everything is costumes, to think that it's uh, in today's dollars is under a half a mil, uh, under a, uh, you know half a million dollars. That just blows me away. What they did with 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 that that budget i mean if you think about yeah. it darth vader stormtroopers all the creature characters um everyone you know was in i mean it's a costume play right mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. there's no no one who's i mean it's just amazing just blows me away how, how well it sounds like it sounds like it's not a lot today but it actually at that time was a lot and the reason why george lucas had those resources was because he was living when he was writing Star Wars for about two years, he was living in a commune, actually. Oh, yeah, I uh, heard about with, this. Yeah. With Francis Ford Coppola. I think I might have told you boys about this, yeah. actually. So, yeah, um, he was living, he had he had major, he had major connections uh, for, you know, uh, so when, when future filmmakers who might be listening to your, your broadcast may be thinking, oh, geez, I want to, I want to pull a George Lucas. <laughs> You really have to be like you really have to have a lot of money behind you. I have a friend, her name I call her T N, um, but she's going to definitely be an Oscar winner one day. She's been working on this this film that um it's a historic film surrounding uh race and ethnicity um it, during the nineteenth century, early twentieth century in Chicago. Mm. And it's and it has this has been something she's been working on since two thousand and nine. Okay, so yeah. you know she, she's a she's a writer in in Hollywood. She works on 
shows, CBS, you know, she's worked on a bunch of shows and she's really talented. But, you know, she, why she can't pull a George Lucas who, you know, spent a few years writing and then blow me as a movie. It really wasn't kind of like that for him either. But he did have very famous, very wealthy friends. And Francis Ford Coppola basically supported him for two years. And he was already, he already came from a family that wasn't poor, you Mm -hmm. know. So he went to film school after having this terrible accident. And that's when he realized that life was short and he really wanted to do this thing. And so he went and did it. Um, And one of his early films, the THX, I uh, was THX was part of the title, and if you look at you know what his special effects it used to be, remember when uh, when you would like be watching a film with special effects, it would be like that crazy sound would come out, and you'd see the big THX letters and some numbers that would follow it, and that was the title of his first film. Right. Um, so that's what got Francis Ford Coppola's attention, actually. So like he he just had connections, and he had money, and, and ninety thousand dollars. I'm telling you, because I, I work with, you know, people like my friend T, who, who is trying to get this film made, she she has like $25 million, and you, that sounds like a lot of money to us, but in filmmaking, it isn't. You know, like you said, it can't even cover the costumes <laughs> for a period piece, a historic piece. It's so, so in comparison, 90 grand at that time was a lot of effing money. And he, was, he got it because he had famous rich friends, like Francis Ford Coppola, <laughs> So um, unless you have that today, it's almost impossible. Like a lot of that stuff that happened was really because he was lucky. Yeah. Lucky, lucky, lucky. I'm hoping that changes a little bit, though. I'm hoping with technology and some of the things that are happening out there that because I, I want to see more. I want to see more um, younger people and independent people make their visions and, you know, and Amazon Studios is making that go. a reality with yeah. things like The Big Sick. And I just yeah. saw Victoria and Abdul yesterday, another kind of oh, independent yeah. film. that yeah, was yeah. amazing. Oh, my God. I was crying like a baby. The whole thing, I was like weeping. I only brought one tissue, but I really needed to bring like a pack. <laughs> that, that, that's a good point. That might I, that might be kind of a future Hollywood because isn't that, that – um, What's his name? That Blomkamp guy. He yeah. moved online. He is doing his own online studio, and he's doing stuff with I want to say Sigourney Weaver hmm. um, online, making these little sci-fi films and stuff that he wants to make outside of the Hollywood system, so to speak. So I think that might yeah. Uh, Amazon, Netflix, they're ju- they changed the whole landscape of of television film. Um, they really have changed it. I remember being interviewed by this editor at Salon.com, I would say maybe two or three years ago, and he was 25 at the time. And um, now I think he might be an editor of Southern Living. Um, oh, he might actually, I think he's an editor of something else now. But uh, he, he, I remember he, he saying something to me like, you know, oh, I've never, I've never watched TV with commercials before. And I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't grow up watching TV with commercials. And I'm like, oh, my, my son was like, <laughs> a similar age at the time, and I'm like, well, I watch TV with my son, and we always saw commercials, so I don't know where you came from. But, um, you know, I, I guess it's it's true today. I have to say today, I don't see commercials either because I watch everything. I stream everything. Yeah. I know online, on demand, it's it's Netflix, it's Amazon Prime. By the way, The Tick was fantastic. Oh, and I, I can't wait for the second yet. part of that to come out. Yeah, that's a little the bit halloween costumes yeah. and a little bit scary I like the and tick. a little bit of like mental health stuff going on <laughs> yeah, yeah so you <laughs> like the, the new tick like, was good huh i liked the, i only the only the first six episodes uh were released okay um so the next ones i think come out in february but i i did i did like it um i did a lot i liked the tick though so do i so i've been a fan Spoon, you know, Spoon. Yeah, yeah. He's just such a big lug, and I love him because he's funny. But he's kind of a, it's a, it's a little bit Donnie Darko-esque. There's a, there's a little shade of Donnie Darko in this, in this new adaptation, you know, in, in certain hmm. ways. You'll, you'll know what I mean. It's not like, not, it's not the same, but man, that's huh. also a great Halloween flick. Donnie Darko. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. I just thought I'd about that. that. Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal. That yeah. was great. Mm. Yeah, I I'm seen totally it in like years. geeking out here. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I'm in geek mode. <laughs> I've got another note that I've got to 
and we can do it quickly and and move on to other stuff but okay so here i gotta ask you about the marvel movie universe because i'm i'm trying to fill in the blanks here and you can help me with this okay there's a screening of thor I, I I can never say Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Rag, Ragnarok. Is that how we say this? Thor Ragnarok. Uh-huh. That I have been in graciously yeah, yeah. invited to tonight, mm-hmm. and so awesome. I'm excited about that. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to see that, and then I'm like, okay, what what about what what Marvel movies have I missed? Because I kind of got kind of off the track. So I I have the list here. Uh, uh, you know, when I when I ended up seeing the original The Avengers movie and liking it, then I went back and filled in all the blanks. So seen the original Iron Man, never saw the Incredible Hulk, Iron Man two, saw that the original Thor. I liked the original Thor. Mm-hmm. That was good. I did too with Natalie Portman. Yeah, that was that was, that was good. good. But they one. didn't have a lot of chemistry on scene uh, on no. screen, rather. So it was that was a little bit disappointing. I remember reviewing that, yeah. writing writing that actually that there's like a little lacking of chemistry. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, I think have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy? That I saw that Guardians of the well? Galaxy. I haven't seen the second Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't. Okay, seen you have Gar- to. I, ooh, see, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen Guardians of the you Galaxy have to. too. You you have to see it. They were both filmed in Atlanta. You have to see it. And then in Do terms of the Hulk, you were talking I go about that. Tonight? No, you don't. Oh, okay. that, that's what I'm <laughs> no, trying to figure out. You don't. Here's here's no. rather than telling you what I've seen, here's what I've missed. Okay, Guardian, the original Guardians of the Galaxy, seen that. Uh, the Avengers: Age of Ultron, I saw that. It was all right. Um, yeah, I, agree. I, I The one that got really good reviews that I still have not seen was the Ant Man. I've heard that was. Good. Oh, Paul Rudd. That, yeah. With Paul yeah. Rudd? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was I great. haven't seen that, that one. That was really funny. Uh, the Civil War, I actually did see that, I think, when it came on Netflix or whatever. And I actually liked it better than I thought I would because it had yep. Ant-Man and because it had mm-hmm. uh, the new Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But see? That was good. But see, I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen the uh, Homecoming Spider-Man. I haven't seen that one yet. That one is fan effing tastic. Yeah, I love it. it. It was perfect. It was perfect. It was perfect in every way imaginable. I really, 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 really enjoyed it a lot. Felt it was funny and yeah, fresh. That's and, what I. That's what um, I like. You know, Andrew Garfield played uh, played the role before, but uh, those weren't terrible. I like Andrew a lot as a person. I think he's a great talent, but. Uh, he was himself in that role, and it really needed this kid. Of course, I like gingers. So this kid is a ginger, and I've got, like, serious girlwood for gingers, and so I really I really like him. I wonder if a little of this has to do with that. But, um, you know, full disclosure, well, but I really thought it was really well written, too, and great. That, and you'll like it because there is a connection to Iron Man and the Avengers and stuff. Well, that's, that's, that why, film, so. that's why I kind of got, when I saw the Winter Soldier, I thought it was kind of dark and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, yeah, and, it was. And, and, and I need these to have some of the humor in it, too, you know? I oh, need you'll little... laugh. You'll laugh a lot in the new, with the new Spider-Man. You'll laugh. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. And then I did see Doctor Strange. I did yes, catch that I love one Doctor Netflix. Strange. Oh, God, I'm getting wet now. I'm not joking. Uh-oh. I'm like, that really, that movie was awesome and mind-blowing and and just awesome i mean i couldn't i've watched it over and over again it's on netflix right now but you know disney is pulling all their properties from netflix in 2019 so get all your get your fix in now because uh disney is starting their own streaming channels like netflix uh they're having (laughs) their own product that they're creating so star wars and stuff will be off too anything related to disney so any of the marvel properties any of the lucas films all going to be gone from netflix that's why netflix is investing in their own series like more heavily now (laughs) so i think with all this i'll be okay tonight from what i've missed i should be okay still with you'll be fine Rug and knock, rug, yeah, rug, for sure. That's rug, the beauty knock. of these things. You don't okay. have to be a fan of the comic books even. You don't even have to have read well, any of it. You can just yeah. go in cold and you'll get the picture. I'm, I'm no you know, Buddha, the, the, with me. the Hulk. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you know, with the Hulk, there were two origin films. One was, the first one uh, was with, oh, I really like this actor too. I can't think um, of his name. He's Bono, an Aussie right? actor. Yes, thank you, Eric Ben. Eric, Eric Banya, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ban- Good Banya, actor. yeah, something. Yeah, he. Mm-hmm. That was directed by Ang Lee, and it was very comic booky. 
you know, very like you could see like the panels basically. It was similar to like a Sin mm-hmm. City in style, um, not in not in tone or in the darkness or anything, but in the same similar cinematography, I suppose. Um, but Ang Lee is brilliant. And then there was a second one, um, you know, that has uh, has my fellow brain tumor survivor in it, who's in the current role as well. So um, yeah, I didn't know if you knew that Mark Ruffalo is is also a brain tumor survivor. Wow. Oh wow! And I now Maria Menounos has joined our our little band of <laughs> brain tumor survivors. Yeah. Yeah, I think that a lot a lot of people are going to start. Uh, that's that's going to come back to roost. That a lot of that brain tumors are different um talk about scary this is you know for halloween everybody's like oh this is so great i have an axe in my head it's pretty much like that if you have a brain tumor it's like somebody just put an axe in your skull Mm. and you know it affects you in different ways and 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 a lot of the the technologies that we use today the smart technologies that are all connected to the postmodern stuff we were talking about and the importance of the individual the irony is that those same things like brain cancer is not familial it's not genetic it is 100% environmental because mm. of environmental stuff. And, I mean, usually people that get brain cancer have also, like I had, a lot of concussions as a kid. I was unsupervised and often and, and, a, and a tomboy swinging from trees and pretending to be Tarzan and Zorro and the Three Musketeers. You know, like I was an active always and always climbing on this electrical box thing mm. <laughs> that uh, yeah. was right outside of my bedroom window at this, I, we, we lived in subsidized housing. I mean, I grew up super poor. So I lived there for 10 years, and it was literally right outside of my bedroom window. And my bed, my head was on that wall. I Like my little twin-sized bed was squeezed up against that wall, and I slept right literally feet, you know, away from this electrical box that I climbed on all the time. <laughs> You yeah. know, and fell off of and got concussions. And, and, like, so I think that a lot of the technology, like cell phones and all the EMF stuff is going to, it's starting to come back now. EMF sensitivity or hypersensitivity is, like, something that's diagnosable. Um, people are actually having problems as a result. So it's, as we go more and more into Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, we're talking about Halloween in, like, a figurative way and the fun parts of it. But yeah. I think that we, we we live the nightmare. We just don't yet realize it fully. Uh, but as more celebrities start to get diagnosed with these uh, kinds of things that have nothing to do with your genes or your or your family patterns, health patterns, or what you eat, you know what I mean? It's not right. like diabetes, where you could type two diabetes, where you can control it with diet and exercise. This is a totally something that you've got nothing to do with at all. It's a total nightmare. Anyway, mm. back to movies. <laughs> I know. Because Brain Tumor Powers, that's with John Travolta with Nominon. Remember that? Right. And Brain Tumor Powers. So, so, and, and I have to say, I do have some, some powers, but <laughs> I don't know if it's yeah. related to my brain tumor or, or if it's vice versa. I don't know. Maybe. I'm kidding. I'm just joking. <laughs> Halloween humor. Not, yeah. Terrible. I'm sorry. I'm terrible you, at this. You could, I'm you so could, bad at it. You could, uh, yeah. There's, there's some costuming opportunities here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh so boy. many. Oh, boy. So many. So many. I want to be X, X. I want to be the new female um, Wolverine. Ooh. I, that's what I want to be. Uh, that costume, like the adult version, not the kid version, right, that right, we right. recently met this year in that new film. That you don't have to see to be a part of this uh, Thor world. Oh, good. But I really think you're going to have so much fun at this film tonight. I can't wait to hear your your what you think. I, You'll have to let me know. I think so, too, because I really haven't been getting out and seeing the movies. I mean, <laughs> it's mostly, you know, it's it's like the, the shut-in media co- consuming yeah. you know they're next to the stove doing a little vegan stir fry and what's up now on star trek or whatever <laughs> the orville but uh yeah so it'll be it's a big wide world out there they tell me <laughs> what they say anyway yeah at the well, metro plays plays the queen plays like death basically she's she's kate blanchett is the and she was like the kate ethereal blanchett. elf Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. She like, is what an actor she yeah, yeah. is. She's I'm crazy big talented. Fan of hers. Yep. Oh yeah. I like the lady, love her work. You know, I mean, I, I'm glad. You know, you mentioned earlier about casting and about how these new reboots and things. You mentioned it in the Star Wars, and, and I, I, I have to tell you, I, I, one of the things that I think was so strong about the Force Awakens and Rogue One as well uh, is the casting. I mean, the mm. cast, I, I love those actors. I love Daisy Ridley. Love John Boyega. 
love uh um, oh yeah uh, isaac uh, um what's his name all right that guy yeah um uh, I just got names mixed up in my head, but um, th- all those people are really, really good, and so I do, I do like that about some of the the new stuff. You get uh, b- better. I, I'd have to say most of these newer movies are b- probably better acted than the older movies, even. Hmm. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah, no. I mean, they were. They really are. Actually, they are. They are a hundred percent. Because think about yeah. like special effects. Since yeah. the '70s come a yeah. long way, so has the craft of acting, yeah. Yeah. and 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 the kind of training that's being given now. It, you know, at the time, um, you know, Carrie Fisher, who we lost this year, sad, yeah. so sad. Yeah. God, I, could, I can't even say. Um, I I went back and watched um, one of her last like live appearances was on mm-hmm. the Graham Norton show. Oh yeah, I um, love that She was in show. London, and actually, she was on her way back from that show. Oh she, wow! That, that was the flight. She did the Green yeah, no. show, and then she was flying back from London. That's oh, right. Yeah, man. that's right. Yeah. So I, I watched watch her last appearance. I you do? Watch that. No, you really do. I, I think it might Graham be Norton's. still on demand. Mm. You, you can watch it. It, it. They they post the interviews and stuff on YouTube. I think I think they officially. I think the show, you know, just like Jimmy Kimmel and all that. I mm-hmm. think there's official ones that you can go up and watch on youtube i found them on youtube and that's yeah that's that's a great, great well try to find because this is how graham norton can, like connects we're connecting all these dots we were talking about mm-hmm. hotel transylvania halloween you know and adam sandler and that his role in in those films and uh what's interesting is there's just a it's going to air the show itself is going to air this this i think friday or Saturday, I think it's Saturday on BBC America, and um, no, it's Friday. It's Friday. Sorry, it's Friday. Don't listen to me. It's Friday. <laughs> no, it's Saturday. It's after Dirk Gently. It's after Dirk Gently. It's Saturday. Okay, so I, I keep thinking today is Sunday, but it's Monday. So anyway, there's a, there's a there was a kind of a big to do because Adam Sandler was on with his most recent co-star. And Emma Thompson and a few other stars on the couch, on Graham's couch, and mm-hmm. going to air this coming Saturday. Uh, and uh, and Adam Sandler was kind of kind of making fun of the recent like sexual harassment stuff oh. by continuously putting his hand on his co-star's knee. And she was like playing along for a while, and then she started taking his hand off and became unhappy and mad at him. Mm. And so did Emma Thompson, and so there was like a little bit of like a a thing happening there. This was on the Graham Norton show. Um, yeah, this is this Oof. is on the show. So I don't know. It's supposed to air. This this all they they you know obviously uh, they tape these shows. So yeah. this this was being taped um, this past weekend or something, and uh, it's going to air on Saturday. Oh, all right. So then. it should be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Timing, uh, Adam. I right. mean, there's uh, there's so much stuff. I mean, you know, I mean the bit the big Hollywood news breaking last night was, uh, you know, Kevin Spacey. Oh and yeah, then, and that yeah. actually is Jason Rapp, who is, mm-hmm. who actually had a very good episode of Star Trek uh, Discovery last night. He was really he's oh. he's and and again with Discovery, I've been trying to work through the style and everything and making it feel like star trek which it started to just recently but again the casting the cast rap yeah. and all of them they're good they're very good cast um it's just you know where are we going with this story and all that but he's very good in in the new star trek um and i actually even like what they did with this character because he's kind of spacey at this point oh that was a really bad joke spacey and, well, and totally that unintentional, was terrible. I'm sure. that was a not a pun intended <laughs> I'm sorry, well, you know, everyone. And I, I, <laughs> I did, it's such a hot a, topic right now. I, I don't, you know, I don't uh, like the Kevin Spacey thing. So I don't, yeah. I, so he was, he was, um, he apologized uh, for sexual misconduct. Okay. So, mm. so like, uh, I, I, I'm a little bit, I'm not torn about any of it. I mean, it, it shouldn't happen. But what is kind of happening now, it seems, is a lot of people are just kind of jumping on the bandwagon, well, similar to the Bill yeah. Crosby thing, you know, Crosby yeah. thing, rather, how it was just like, 
um, all of a sudden one person comes out and then suddenly there's like 30 people and yeah it's that it's it doesn't always so like i i've worked in hollywood i've not been on a in a big film or anything everything i've been in has been cut on the cutting room floor so i'm mm. like a nobody and nothing but i've worked with people and and i definitely have stories too um tons of them in fact uh, but uh you know a lot of the stuff that happened is not different from anybody else that like you know every job i've ever had even as a college professor i was sexually harassed at yeah, every yeah. job every job and so you know but it doesn't mean that i'm going to sue every person you can't do you even know how much that happens to me? I can't sue everybody. My my personal trainer, the first night we worked together, he's 25 and gorgeous, and I really love him, actually. Um, but the first night we worked together, he said, he actually asked me if I wanted to hang out, quote, hang out, you know, you want to hang out? That's like Ooh. code for it. Let's go have yeah. sex. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it, it wasn't, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything that was uh, hidden. You know, he wasn't. He liked me. He genuinely liked me. Mm -hmm. So, like, where is the line there, you know? And now, of course, we have this friendship. We've known each other for about a year. And we have this great friendship. And, and we are constantly talking about sex. It's constant. And I'll, con and I'll say things to him. You know, I'll be like, you know, <laughs> you know, well, geez, you know, it's, here we are walking. We take these long walks every week, you know, in, in, <laughs> you know, in the dark. It's true, like these sunset walks, and we'll be talking, and we'll say things, and and I'm said I'm sitting there thinking I'm older, like when am I going? Like if I become famous one day, is he going to come out and say that I sexually harassed him? <laughs> you know, <laughs> even though it wasn't exactly that way, and I I sort of so I'm not entirely sure, and I'm very flirty, and as you know, I say totally off the wall sexual things a lot. Where does it become like sexual harassment? You know, and mm. how how and when does that work? And obviously, I'm not asking young men to give me massages and taking out my, you know, taking my boobs out in front of them or something like that. <laughs> like Harvey Weinstein, that was a pattern of behavior that, you know, is like undeniable. Yeah. But, you know, at what point is it like, you know, is a flirtation taken? And, and I'm a woman saying this. Uh, when I was sexually harassed, so much out of the Harvey Weinstein situation, the CFO of a very big company was was going to pay me and in order for him to pay me he asked me to sit on his lap oh. and i said um i have a phd i don't <sighs> sit on laps and i made a joke about it and within six months i was fired from my in from what i was doing um and and and, and a number of things happened in that six yeah. months that continued the harassment on that that's harassment yeah, he wasn't a lot. he's married he's a married guy yeah. i was c connected to somebody at the time i'm like you know that was not okay that was not okay, but like when I'm talking to my trainer friend and we're like flirting with each other, I don't think that's sexual harassment, but I'm afraid, you know, maybe it could be construed that way someday. I, I don't know, you know, like he's, he's, uh, he's not a child. He's 25. Maybe that is a child. I don't know. Is that bad? <laughs> Uh, I, I'm like 21 well, years older. No, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, you got something there, but uh, but I mean, your example is is a like a, per, I mean, perfect uh, example of uh, really uh, sure not just impropriety, but an illegal act of saying, uh, you know, here we have an employment situation and you need to do me favors right. to, right. you know, it's like <laughs> to get illegal, paid. ring the yeah. bell. Here comes the lawsuit, right. and you, you know. Well, I wish, so. I wish, but you know, I, I don't wish because lawsuits are a nightmare. They are. But really, a lot of women can't come out, and I certainly didn't. And I, even when I was fired, I knew that the circumstances were not right. But do you know, do you know the burden of proof that you have to come up with? Like, for this Harvey Weinstein thing, there is literally decades worth of women who are coming forward and saying the same pattern. Yeah over and over again so it's it's not going to be a big money winner for anybody because it's yeah. so many of them frankly but uh that's that's a it's and it's frankly not it it's all unsubstantiated you know all the people are coming out with the same stories but in terms of the law like the actual letter of the law you have to have like in order for me to get my stalker arrested which never happened because it never happened i had to have a picture of his or her face the full frontal of their face in order for the police, that's what the police told me, in order to issue an arrest warrant, they needed a full facial recognition, like 
I'm like, are you kidding me? How is that? <laughs> Excuse me, but why are you raving me? Can we stop it? <laughs> let me take your picture. Yeah, yeah. You know, and maybe uh, let me go set up a video camera so we can see the proof of this, because otherwise it's my word against theirs. And yeah. that's really the situation that you're in as a woman with a lot of the sexual harassment stuff. It, everybody's like, oh, women stay quiet. Of, of course we do. There's, if you've ever been a part of a lawsuit, which I have, the burden of proof is so heavy on the victim that's why so many rape cases get unsolved. I mean, we're talking about people that were physically raped, that their sperm is sitting in some lab somewhere, the sperm that was collected from them. You know, in Florida had a very famous thing happen about two or three, and maybe it was two years ago, or it was, I think it was 2016, actually, so, where, where they had messed up all these lab samples, and, and these cases were unsolved because the lab just simply hadn't done their job. Gotcha. It's the yeah. case in my in my case. There's no there's DNA evidence that was collected during my stalking nightmare in Atlanta. Do you know that the that that still hasn't come back yet? Supposedly. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that was 2015, January 2015, mind you. So today mm. is you know the end of October 2017. It's it's been well over two years. We're actually looking at almost three years, and you know Georgia is not not exactly fantastic. They had the FBI made all these arrests of policemen and, and uh, state prison uh, workers and civilian workers that were basically harassing people outside of the prison for prisoners. Mm. <laughs> so there were 61 <clears throat> arrests made in, in, um, in 2016. So Georgia is terrible, but it's, it's just impossible. So, so that's kind of my thinking. I mean, in terms of nightmares and Halloween and, and what's huh. scary about the yeah. world, I'm sitting here thinking, is my 25-year-old trainer going to sue me one day? Well, <laughs> we'll see. I, yeah. I want to bring it back around because uh, Halloween is tomorrow, right, right. and uh, we want to we want to leave on a. On a happy positive note, yeah. don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Sure, maybe. Uh, I'm haunted by these things. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's definitely right. no. It's a bit. It's part of the Halloween thing. The the scary nature of our world versus the this versus the fun well, that, of Halloween. Yeah, you know how good that's it the whole is. Thing. Uh, dystopian sci-fi, scary movies. Just walk outside. Just read the news. You're like, oh, that's right. Scary. I I could believe me. We could talk for hours. There's there's. Uh, there's other interesting stories out there, but mm. I don't. So, what are we? So, what are your plans for for tomorrow? Are you like, oh, uh, what? What's the? What's the? What are? What? What's what are the we itinerary watching? Itinerary on Doc Hazel, yeah. Oh, sh yeah. Well, what, are, every year I do a little Halloween party for okay. kids. Like my neighbor, you know, we were talking about how you, you know, your neighbors or whatever you go mm -hmm. over and have. So I happen to have, my, I live in a very young neighborhood, and everybody oh, has good. kids under five, that's basically, fun. except for me. <laughs> and um, my kid is like, you know, crazy old. Um, so for, we're, we're really, it's, we look the same age, and it's kind of sad. <laughs> sad and mm. awesome for me at the same time. So I have like little donuts on strings, and we do the donut game. And my nephews come over, and they're now they're now teenagers themselves, and so they're going to come and trick or treat in my neighborhood, and so we do that. That's fun. And I get dressed up for all of that. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I make like I make pizza. Like I do, I'm like a serious yeah. cook. So I make all this food that for the like kids, fun. and it's a lot of fun. And then and then, you know, because I'm so, so <laughs> because I'm really a gay man. <laughs> On the inside, of, of course, all my most of my friends are in fact gay men. So, uh, and I'm not, I'm not like the, uh, I'm not, I'm not the hanger on. I'm sort of like just part of the group. It's weird. We all like the same things, and so, mm. <laughs> uh, so we we are doing this big at the Bachelor Forum. You know, or not not the Bachelor Forum. It's like a different. It's like some club. Um, there's going to be, uh, I think, is it is it the club or is it a bar? I forget. Um, but we're going to be doing like a costume Halloween thing. And then I was also invited to do a Geeks Who Drink quiz thing um, at another bar in New York. So Nice. Yeah, partying like crazy until probably 2 or 3 a.m. That's my... <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, yep. that's it. Yeah, Maybe that sounds... Time. All right. That sounds good. Uh... What about you guys? Nothing. No. Nah, just take the kid... The, take my daughter trick or treating. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, not a whole lot. Just kind of laying low. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna lay low and 
uh, maybe watch a movie or something. I mean, it's like I, I think I think it's great when you have the little kids. I know Halloween was was I I did a lot of crazy stuff and there's mm-hmm. you know dress up with the kid and all that but oh, yeah. uh yeah. yeah yeah if you got the little kids around because halloween is like christmas for kids it's like what? Oh, yeah. you yeah. know um but uh I, i'm gonna gonna watch something maybe i'll watch one of the old classics like dracula or something yeah, there you, go. you know you should so, yeah you should yeah, yeah. i like the black sure. and white you know i like the no cgi just really you know Vandal suck your blood. You right. Know. Yeah. yeah. Last night was my night for uh, uh, Bella Lugosi, yeah. nineteen thirty-one yeah. Dracula. Yeah. When I put that clip in uh, earlier, yeah. I uh, I did it. Oh, and by the way, mm-hmm. I did as we were prepping for the show. As I was scrambling around here, we did put the Monster Mash. Oh rap yeah. Oh yeah. Up online. Oh, uh, yeah. If uh, it should be a tradition, actually, you can play this for your uh, your kids <laughs> on YouTube. They love it. Kids love it. The monster monster mash rap. You that, can look it up. That was circa what year? Nineteen ninety. Eighty nine. I want to say. Yeah. yeah. Eighty nine. Wow. Yours truly, Doc Normal. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's at. I think it should be at monstermashrap.com. It's also on YouTube. Um, and I re I re-edited it last year. I made a nice uh, yeah. There it is. You just go monstermashrap dot com. Here it is right here. Mm-hmm. If you just go there, I don't even know what's up there. But uh, <laughs> play it for the kids. It's the rap. It's a rap. It's my rap version of the Monster Mash. That's right. Oh, uh, I have to listen to that, Doc. That sounds good. I can. I'll, yes, I'll post it on the uh, on the thing. Um, so, yeah, so that's fun. The kids do a little dance. Stop it. I think... Yeah? <laughs> before we do, go... Do one more trick or treat? I think so, yeah. Don't you? Okay, yeah, because yeah, I, think, I, think, uh, I think Doc Hazel needs no. another trick or treat. Okay. So okay. let me reach, uh, reach in. I do. I need more treats. Okay, more let's treat. see what you, what you got. Reach now. in there. Oh, yes. Another I got t- some... Uh, Doc, Doc, you have some... Uh, let's see. Wasa- wa- wasabi paste, right? Ooh, I love wasabi. It's in a tube. Yum. Don't don't get it uh, mixed up with like bunion remover or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> wasabi wasabi paste. Wasa- you never know when you're or having even sushi, toothpaste, you right? Might need a little yeah. wasabi. Right. Um, I, you I, brush I, your teeth with some. You could brush your teeth with that I think, stuff. I mean, come on. I think right. it's expired, actually. Even well, so, it, it says, I think it's an expired um, tube of wasabi. Uh, yeah. If the, it's expired, you might be able to whiten your teeth better. Right. <laughs> it says here the date is uh, December twenty second, two thousand and sixteen. Oh, what's a year in wasabi? Oh, that's nothing. That's right. It's not even a year old, or that. Yeah, it's 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 sealed. Come on. It's like the five-second rule, but for exactly. hermetically sealed packages. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because you know that Heinz ketchup would uh, will last uh, 25 or 30 years in a oh, bomb yeah. shelter. I mean, come on, right? Yeah. If there's nuclear war tomorrow, at least you got the wasabi. Uh, Heinz ketchup and the wasabi paste. And, and of some course, grits. You know, <laughs> and some grits, right? And Twinkies have a shelf life of, what, 500 years? And for so. entertainment, you and won't have And because it's Halloween, gentlemen, yeah. we have to take a page out of Thomas Harris's book. We're talking about, oh. you know, na- disasters happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know where I'm going. Add a little Chianti, some fava oh. beans, maybe a little human brain. Yeah. You know, oh. we could go full on Halloween if we want. I mean, I'm a vegetarian, yeah. like an ethical vegetarian, and I, similar to you, Doc, I, I, I don't eat meat because I don't want to kill animals or sustain my life on death or violence. Mm, but there right. are some humans that I think might taste not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we're, we're talking Halloween now. And this is like in the, in the in the spirit of Halloween. I mean, oh, I might, yes. I might be okay uh, with eating some human. I think, well, what's uh, a little uh, that, what's some a, evil? What's a little soylent green among friends, right? Yeah. I think I'll go I'm as telling a, you. <laughs> I think I'll go as an ethical vegan Hannibal Lecter. Ooh. Yes, I like it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> could you could you do that? I mean, actually, he was really uh, ethical about Chianti. it. It was because they those Father people be- killed his sister, and he found their te- her teeth in their poop. You know, I oh. mean, if anybody read the book, <laughs> yeah, oh. well, that's how he became a psycho. It was not his fault, right? Yeah. You know what? Sympathetic you, character. All you got to do is Google uh, if if you if you want a a, a scary true story i mean it's been reported in actual mainstream news outlets as 
much as you think that they report news. If you want a, <laughs> uh, a, a scary, true life mm. uh, news story for Halloween, true, uh, Google Russian cannibals in your news. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's disturbing. So there you go. I'm just going to yeah. leave it there. We don't have to talk about it. But uh, the story <laughs> broke uh, about a month or yeah. more ago. But I noticed that, that a couple news outlets just reposted it again. I wonder why. Right. Could it be because we're so close to Halloween? It was the same story reposted right before Halloween. Uh, uh, perfect. Yeah. Yep. No, it's real Hannibal Lecter stuff when you read the story. And, and there's well, pictures and I think that it and was stuff. in Russia, wasn't it? Wasn't it Hannibal was Lecter's in... story didn't it start in Russia? Wasn't it, <laughs> actually? I guess. I don't know. Is that a thing? Yeah, I think it was. Is that like a thing, you know? <laughs> I guess it is. It's a thing over there. I, I think Just... it is. Actually, that's part of why it's like maybe, like you said, the closeness to Halloween, the proximity to the holiday is not a coincidence. So, so uh, you're but s- also the proximity to like Red Dragon and and yeah. Hannah Blechter, the whole storyline there. That was now that was some scary. Shit, I like the Red right? Dragon. I mean, I like the Red Dragon. Oh, Red Dragon was crazy. Yeah. That was one of the Fien brothers, right? Mm. Ralph Fiennes or something? I, I mm. think. I don't know. No. <laughs> I mean, Not I, the one that was in Shakespeare in Love, the other guy. Oh. The guy that was in the J-Lo Christmas movie or something. Mm, <laughs> <man. laughs> Made in Manhattan. He was in her, that gotcha. show. He played a politician. I yeah, just remember I know. I'm seeing sorry. The, I'm so bad. It's Ralph. <laughs> Michael it's Ralph Mann for movie. Sure. So, on, mm. Called Manhunter originally. You know, so. I, I, it's, it's almost like Michael Bay. When I think about these directors and Brett Ratner, they rely so much on like explosions and... Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. I really like the the Hannibal Lecter movies with Jodie Foster because that was really like psychological thrillers are scary, right? Super yeah. scary, more so than the Saw or Hostel. Yeah. Or things yeah. where you're just well, being brutalized. That's not as scary. I mean, plus it's scary. It's it's Sir it's Anthony awful. Hopkins, all <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, oh. oh my God, what could be better? Now than he that? now talk about it, bringing it all the way around. Who played Thor's father in the Marvel franchise movies? That's right. It was bring it, it to me. It was right Anthony now. Hopkins, yeah, Sir Anthony, right? which is yeah, why I like I like that. I like that a lot. So yeah, and, good tie-ins. I yeah, like it. Yeah. So, <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, I know, Doc. It's I, I got to tell you, it, it's always fun talking to you, uh, it, it, folks. If you want. To read just some great blogs, if you want to uh, pick up her books, go f- Google in Dr. Rebecca Housel, the pop culture professor, and I swear that you, every time, you will leave enlightened. So there you go. A little bit better. That's a, that's my job on the planet. Hopefully, making it a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate the shout out for the blog RebeccaHousel.com because that. I, I made it myself. I made the whole website. I built it myself, and I webmaster nice. it. Like, I kind of don't sleep really, so I do all <laughs> these different things, and um, and I really work hard on those writing pieces. I just had a new one too. I didn't publicize yet. Mm. Um, I have one that for Halloween called Hocus Pocus. Um, you know, where I tell you that your ex can rest in peace or in pieces, <laughs> as the case may be, <laughs> in the spirit of Halloween. You know, right. Not because right. I hate any of my exes. Right. Um, not at all. I mean, I love everybody, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe too sure. much. Anyway, sure, yeah. sure. I should, I should just dress up as like a harlot or something. I'm mean, like, <laughs> oh. like a temptress. What are those things? Those, those, uh, the mythological creatures. You could be a uh, succubus. That, yeah, succubus. Yeah, that's right. That's what I should be. A succubus. So, what are you uh, going this great. year as? Well, I'm a this succubus. Year, I'm, I'm a succubus. I mean, I kind of think that's what I am. At, you know, like in that's what my costume is, which is with like the wings and the devil horns. I'm not sure what I am really. Uh-huh. I see it as more of my true self. <laughs> and gotcha. I put on my wings and stuff, and my uh, my nephews are always looking at me, and I'm like, "This is my true self, boys," and they're like, "Oh boy." <laughs> Our aunt, who we love, who swears too much and feeds us too much and takes us to all these movies and buys us all these comics. We love her. There One day when I'm dead. That's that's what they're going to remember. She she couldn't stop swearing, which I can't, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> so like my little twelve year old nephew, I'm like, oh my god, Sam, look at this shit. And he's like, <laughs> oh, I'm like, yeah, I know. Let's just keep going. Hey, that, that's why we Pumpkins love you, Doc. And, 
I know. I kind of right. carved my pumpkins, by the way. Are you boys carving pumpkins, making some jack-o'-lanterns? Already done, yeah. Already done. Yeah, so I, I let the kids do that. Plate. That's your thing now. Oh, it's my thing. I'm making a haunted house one. I'm making a bat. I'm making like a vampire one. I'm, I bought like a 10 pumpkins. <laughs> I'm such a crazy Halloween person. I've got like a mm. graveyard in my yard. I'm like, yeah. got the blow up thing, you know, with like the crazy lights. I just love it. So much fun. In, in the spirit of well, you Hannibal boys Lecter. have a great Halloween. Oh, thank you, Doc. You say? I, I said in the spirit of Hannibal <laughs> Lecter, I'll be carving Jason. You yeah, sure? Why not? No, I'll actually be carving Whoa, Jason. That's yeah. so like, you know, you know. It that's reads. a good idea. I might do a hockey mask <laughs> in one of mine. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, well, we're gonna do a reenactment of eating Raul. Yeah. And. Uh, oh my God! I <clears> forgot <throat> all about that. Yeah. That's another good one. Wow, so, so many good. Oh, what about like the Glenn Cook? I don't like the the I don't like the concept of women being stalkers. And actually, in reality, seventy percent of femicide in the United States is because of male stalkers killing their female victims. But you know, of course, the the Glenn Close film with Michael Douglas and oh. the Boiling Rabbit comes yeah. to mind when I think about psychological thrillers and really kind of scary moments for me. Right. You know, I love rabbits. I actually had a rabbit when I was like sixteen. And so it was sad for me when I saw that in the movie. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Mm. But it was a good movie, though. Yeah. yeah. So I think, It was a great movie, Glenn Close. That's right. Uh, so you have a happy Halloween. And Jason, you have a Thank happy you. Halloween. That's right. And you're, I guess we're all going to have a happy and safe Halloween. You got it. And I think, Jason, what do you think? Should, should we leave them with the Monster Mash rap again? Oh, I, I, I think mean, it's a monster. Yeah. It's queued up. I want to hear it. So we might as well. Cue it's it, queued baby. up. So we'll uh, we'll go uh, we'll go with the Monster Mash rap. Uh, look at it from at monstermashrap.com. There you go. Um, play it for the kids. The kids will love it. Um, there you go, Doc. It, it was great talking to you. Yes. I love you, boys, so much. Happy Halloween, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great Halloween, everybody. We'll see you on Friday.
It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. The monster mash. And it's a graveyard smash. It's now the mash. It got on in a flash. The monster mash. It's now the monster mash. They did the mash. Everything's cool. It's a part of the plan. The monster mash. Monster mash is a hit of land. And you can mash. You the living this mash was made too. And you can mash. When you get to my door, tell them. Boris sent you. You can all jam. Shut up.